Good evening and welcome to the Power Hour of Prayer. I am your host, Pastor Ren Shuffman from Freedom Fellowship Church, and tonight is going to be a night of miracles. That's right. Right here on this broadcast, we're going to prophesy, we're going to pray over you, and we're going to equip the body of Christ to do the work of the gospel. So tune in right now and go ahead and shout out and let us know where you're watching the broadcast from. Shout out the state or the country that you're watching from right now and let us know and we'll highlight you guys. I love to just say hello to North Carolina's in the house already. Canada is in the house. We got Tennessee joining us. Pennsylvania. Then I can't say that word all of a sudden. Pennsylvania joining us. Oklahoma, of course. Arkansas. The UK is in the house. Pretty late in the UK right now. So thank you for being up late or or uh, going to bed earlier. Whatever you're doing. Chicago in the house. Hallelujah. Indiana, Georgia, South Africa is joining us already. More from Pennsylvania, more from Oklahoma. Hallelujah. Florida is in the house. The nation of Kenya is represented. Come on, guys. Jump in. Say hello. More from the UK. All right. Michelle, you must be spreading the word. Come on. Spread it over there in the UK. Uh, Michigan, New Zealand is in the house. Colorado. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'll be up in Tulsa, Oklahoma next month. Queensland, Australia is in the house. Come on. Phoenix, Colorado, California. Uh, I love it. Most of the nation is represented right now. We've got several nations around the world jumping on the broadcast right now. T tonight is going to be absolutely powerful. So do me a favor. Keep shouting out where you're watching from. But at the same time, take a second and share out this live broadcast. Share this out as a public post on your profile. Do it public. That way, if anybody else sees it and wants to share it out, they can do so as well. So let's just share this out and see how far we can reach. Tonight is going to be a really powerful night. So let's be evangelists and reach people for the gospel. I'm telling you, somebody's on your Facebook wall that is having a day, that's having a moment, and they need to hear that God knows what they're going through. All right. They need to hear that God is still for them and not against them, that God's plans for them is yes and amen. He has plans for their future. They need to hear that tonight. So be a share, share out the broadcast. We got like 120 of you already on the broadcast right now. And if, if all 120 of you share this broadcast, we'll have 250 in just a matter of seconds. So let's see how far we can reach the gospel tonight. Uh, we have an amazing guest joining us tonight. I'm super excited about him being on here. Uh, I've gotten to connect a little bit to him, get to know him a little bit. We've had him at our church just recently. So it's going to be a powerful night, guys. So I want you guys to share out the broadcast real quick, and we're going to get going in just a second. Hallelujah. Shreveport in the house. Where else are you guys watching from? Any other nations on here tonight? The nation of Texas. It's kind of a nation. It's kind of, I mean, you guys, come on. New Mexico is in the house. All right. I'm looking for any new states that I haven't seen recently. Uh, or new nations. I love it. So if you're just joining us and this is your first time, go ahead and say first time. Let us know uh, and let us know where you're watching from. First time and what state or, or nation you're watching from. We'd love to have you. But let's go ahead and, and say hello to our guest. I want to bring him on. Uh, now, this gentleman was just at our OSI conference. It was an amazing conference. The power of God uh, came down heavily. He taught. It was, it was just ridiculous and wonderful what God did in that room. I mean, the ministry time that happened uh, while he was in the room was just phenomenal. Uh, it was phenomenal all week, but he brought the fire of God with him. And this gentleman has actually brought the fire of God with him for, gener for, for decades now, for several decades. I won't say generations, that's way too old, uh, but just decades. Uh, as far as from way back with John Wimber, all the way and just till the other day where he was doing a great conference with Bill Johnson and Cindy Jacobs, hopefully tonight he's not going to call me out uh, uh, on the broadcast with Cindy Jacobs again. The last time I got Paula White and Cindy Jacobs confused. And while we were talking, he messaged Cindy Jacobs and confirmed that I was wrong. Uh, and so that was a, a beautiful gaffe that I loved, but uh, I appreciate it. So this man, let me let me say something about this man be, before I bring him on, because if I bring him on, I'm going to embarrass him. So I'm just going to let him sit there embarrassed where you can't see it. No, no, I'm going to bring him on. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make him blush while we do this. So why don't you guys say hello to Ken Fish? Let me add him in here. Hi, Ken. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing all right. How are you? See, I'm already good. Now I'm making you blush already. Let me say this about you, okay? Because because I was pondering this earlier. Uh, you know, a lot of times there's so many different circles and there's so many different people out there. They're just flowing in the anointing of God. You know, sometimes I think we get into an island on our own and we think there's only three or four 
you know, that are actually listening to God in the world. And that's not true. And there's so many people that when you talk to someone, someone says, oh, I've heard of that, that person, or, oh, I don't know who that is. I was shocked when I first started in the circle with Randy Clark. And so many people didn't know who Randy Clark was. I had to say Bill Johnson's best friend. And, and I had to make, I had to connect all the pieces of, of where Randy Clark fit with Bill Johnson for them to catch it. Right. A lot of times. And so it just shocks me sometimes who we don't know, but let me tell you this. When I was, when I'm debating about who I bring on the broadcast or I'm debating about who I have a, a relationship with, or even just listen to for two minutes, let me be honest. Okay. There, there's two types of people. If I am trying to fill up a conference, if I just want to put butts in the seats, okay, which is never my intention, but if I'm just trying to fill up a conference, I'm going to look to for who the people know, who do the most average person, who do they know? Who's, who's on K loves little 59 seconds of hope. you know, like, like, who's on, you know, who's, who's got a name brand out there that will fill, put butts in the seats. But if I'm looking for someone that I can bring in to something or on something that actually has the power to change lives. I'm not looking for who the average person knows. I'm looking for who the leaders know. I'm looking for when I talk to leaders, if they say, oh yeah, I know that name. Oh yeah, I know exactly who he is. Yes, I've worked with him. It, it seems like every time I turn around, everybody that I respect and look up to for their anointings, their wisdom and everything, everybody knows Ken Fish. Every leader knows Ken Fish. So as far as I'm concerned, every person on here that may have not seen you before needs to know who you are. That tells me when leaders know who you are, that tells me that you carry something that they respect. And, and that really lets me know that when I bring you on here, you're going to do something to impact people's lives, not just be a name brand. Uh, and you know, people know who you are as well, but that is what I'm looking for. And you definitely have that. And so I appreciate you coming on the broadcast tonight, Ken. I told you I was going to embarrass you just a little bit. You, cool. did, you did exactly that. I, I, I really don't know what to say except I guess thanks. I'm yeah. Kind of. I'm kind of humbled and surprised to hear I, I, you've been sniffing around, and that's what people are saying. But thank you. I, I, and I'm just, I'm just saying that because I, I don't know what kind of day you're having, but I almost felt like I needed to say that to you, right? I know, you know, I don't know the full extent of your day, but I'm just saying I think you need to know that when leaders start recognizing what you carry, you know, you, you know what your carry is is releasing something, and so I'm excited for what you're going to release tonight. Hey guys, do me a favor, share out the broadcast right now. We're going to take another second or two of just intro, so you have a chance to share it out. We have like. 170 people on here. Share it out right now. Let's get well over 200, 300, 400. Let's get it. Let's get a thousand. We can do that. Okay. Let's honor our guests tonight and just really celebrate what's going to happen here and believe that God's going to do something great. So here's what I want you to do. If you believe that God has something for you tonight, you're watching because God has something for you tonight. I want you to share that out as an act of faith. Hit share. And, and as an act of faith, you believe that people on your wall are going to get to watch God change your life. And they're going to get to be a part of it. Do that. If you believe that, if you don't, then don't share it. Okay. But go ahead and share it right now. Let's get some people on here. So Ken, for a couple of those people that don't know who you are yet, you've been on the broadcast before. Tell them a little bit about your ministry and your background. Uh, well, my ministry is called Orbis Ministries, but um, some who may have bumped into me somewhere sometime back could know our older name of Kingdom Fire Ministries. We changed the name because... Some of the um, people I work with, uh, churches and movements, and a few of my donors were saying Kingdom Fire is not the best choice of names in certain circles of the church. In other circles, nobody would care. Um, but anyway, um, and I kind of was resistant to that for a while, but I was trying to be open. And one night I had a dream and the Lord said, Orbis Ministries. So I woke up the next morning and I called my webmaster and I said, would you please check the domains for this name? Everything was available, if you can believe that, everything. So we, we, only, we only use orbisministries.org, but uh, we grabbed everything. So .mil, .gov, .edu, .com, you name it, we have it. But that's mainly to prevent people from maybe establishing something on an adjacent site, and then there's a confusion about what's going on. Sure. Yeah. So we're orbisministries.org, and I've been doing this full-time for about 10 years. Um, I've been in ministry... You know, it's hard to say exactly how even to measure it because I, I got involved with John Wimber in my very early 20s. Um, and I went to seminary and graduated, you know, as many people do uh, from seminary. And I have always been involved in ministry. Um, I've done conferences. I've uh, even when I was in a business career, 
I would often preach in churches maybe 25 times a year, sometimes more. So that works out to about every other week um, as what, you know, what is known in church circles as a supply preacher. So if the pastor's going to be out and it's not a multi-staff church where you've got someone else that you can have speak, you might call in a supply preacher. So I was doing that and I was leading, uh, like I say, retreats and conferences, probably four or five of each a year. Um, so on the weekends when I wasn't preaching somewhere else, I'd be doing that. And then my wife and I were heavily involved in ministering in our church, whichever church we were in. And we did everything. We taught, you know, kindergarten. We taught uh, fifth grade boys. We taught third grade girls. Uh, we taught junior high. We taught high school. And we were just always trying to be busy about the work of the kingdom. And uh, we did all that while I was holding down a very demanding full-time uh, job career. Um, because I was told that no matter what you do in life, no matter how you earn your living, no matter where your money comes from, you're supposed to be about the business of the kingdom of God. You're supposed to serve Jesus ardently. And I was trying to do that. I was just trying to follow the instructions I was given. And uh, I don't know, God, God blessed that. So, you know, faithfulness counts for a lot in the kingdom of God. Come on. That's absolutely true. So you, uh, you know, so you have this history of working for John Wimber way back in the day d during, you know, all of that great vineyard movement. And then you're traveling with Blaine Cook, you, you know, uh, uh, just doing that conference with Cindy Jacob and Bill Johnson. So you've been moving in big circles of big, powerful moments of God, seeing uh, uh, revivals and powerful, you know, some of the, some of those powerful things that have happened, like in the kingdom of God, uh, you've been in the mix of all that. And so that, I mean, what a legacy and a future, like what, what a, what a, what a moment for you that you've shared in all that kind of stuff. And so I'm excited for what you bring. And, and I know that you're uh, you, not only are you just full of the spirit, but you uh, are quite educated. You're a scholar in yourself, you know, that you, you have a deep understanding of the word of God um, and, and an intellectual. So I understand that. So you kind of carry for, for me, when, when I'm talking to you, you kind of carry like both sides of that. Sometimes you can get somebody that's just all intellectual and no spirit. And then you get someone that's head so far up in the clouds, right? And, and, and they're all spirit, but they have uh, no process about them. And you really carry both of those, which I think makes you a dangerous asset for the kingdom of God is that you can kind of come from, from both those aspects. And given the history that you've seen just makes what you carry and just the, um, uh, the history of what's available to you, uh, powerful. And I think that's why, uh, you know, when you were here with us, you were teaching mostly on deliverance and, and, and it was powerful and people got set free and it was just radical what's happened, but you've seen some crazy things, uh, in your day, c c just for the people that are in the room, never seen any of this. We're over 210 people right now, guys share out the broadcast right now. I think we can get over 300 really quickly, share out the broadcast, but just tell us one quick story. If you could like some crazy miracle or something that really impacted you of that moment where, where it got out of your head and into your heart like out of your head and into your spirit where it said, okay, I'm not intellectualizing the Bible. This is undeniable. Like one of those great stories. Yeah. We, or you can go somewhere else. Sure. Yeah. We used to have a lot of these moments, um, back in, you know, the early days as we called it now call it, uh, where the presence of God would just come into the room. And when the presence would come in that particular way, and you know, John Wimber used to point it out and, we would go after it. But when that, when the presence of God would come in that particular way, um, it was almost like being at a carnival in a shooting gallery and you just sort of shoot as fast as you can. And whether you're popping balloons or knocking spinners or whatever, you just want to get shots on goal because when those kinds of moments come and they're not all the time, but uh, the scripture references this in Luke five verse 17, it talks about how they brought a crippled man to Jesus and it says, and the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. So apparently that was a unique time or a, we might say a, a distinctive time, something that, um, you know, Luke recognized as he was writing his gospel, but it wasn't always that way. There are a few other moments in the gospel of Luke that talk about this same kind of anointing. There's another reference to it in Luke 6, 19, where everyone's trying to touch Jesus and it says power was going out of him and everyone who touched him was healed. So when, when we see those moments, um, it's kind of like open season and you can you can do what you want to do. And um, we had one of those moments in uh, Washington, D.C. 
Oh, uh, I was probably about six years ago now. Maybe it was maybe it was as few as five. But I was doing a, a training event there, and we had several hundred people in the meeting. And it was, I mean, it was really crazy, Ren. You would have had to, you would have loved this one. But um, I was taking a few words of knowledge from the crowd to kind of get them accustomed to doing that. And there was a woman down very close to the front on my, just to my left. So essentially the right side of the center line of the room, if you're looking at the stage from the back. And so, um, you know, I kind of look at her again. She's on my left, but she's really on the right side of the room. And, uh, and I said, yes. And all of a sudden she just jumps to her feet and in a very, very animated, loud, kind of out of control way, she points at the back of the room beyond me. And she says, I, I see him. He's, he's right there. And I mean, it was obvious <laughs> what she was referring to. She knew yeah. Jesus had walked into the room and all of a sudden the room just, it just went off and I felt something off on my right side. So this would be now for those facing the stage, the left side of the church on my right side, kind of towards, towards the stage area. Uh, I'm, I'm just come off the stage and I'm on the floor, but on the right side, kind of back of the stage again, for me, the right side, but it would be for anyone watching that would be in their left. I felt this wave just kind of hit the room. And when, as it kind of passed me, it, it sort of rocked me a bit as, as it went by. And all of a sudden it hit the crowd and I saw people, they were like, they were like popcorn the way we used to make popcorn. So this is <laughs> microwave popcorn in a bag, right? Where you nuke it for 30 seconds. This is where you put the oil in the bottom and you've got the lid on the thing and you're shaking the deal like that. And you hear And all of a sudden it just is going. It, it was like that. And all kinds of stuff just sort of exploded in the room. Um, it, it was, it was, it was really incredible. I, in the midst of, as this is starting, someone says, I smell cinnamon. And, you know, cinnamon is sometimes used to treat people who have diabetes or hypoglycemia. It, it's a natural um, uh, insulin producer in the body. And so, Someone says, I smell cinnamon, and all of a sudden I just said, God is healing diabetes type 1 and type 2, and he's also healing hypoglycemia. If you have any of these conditions, stand up. And all over the room, people stood up, and as soon as they stood up, it, the wave hit them, and a lot of them were literally bowled over backward on the pews and kind of, you know, feet in the air, uh, you know, head over tea kettle kind of thing. People are falling out in the aisles, and it was like, so we got a testimony after the fact, you wouldn't be able to measure this in the moment, but after the fact, um, the pastor queried people about this and we had 22 confirmed healings of diabetes in that one moment. Whoa. That wave hit the room of, of, you know, some would say glory, some would say power, but whatever that was, boom, there it happened. And the well, other one that really, those are interchangeable right. words, right? Glory and his glory is his power. That's, I mean, they're kind of interchangeable. They're often used interchangeably. I, 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 I'm not sure that they're identical. I think they're linguistically they're different words, and I think the concepts theologically are, are somewhat different. But there's it's like a Venn diagram. There's overlap for sure. Yeah. But there are some things about the power that don't really match the glory, and the glory <laughs> doesn't always match the power completely. Anyway, um, so I remember those, and then all of a sudden, three deaf people came up to me, and they all had hearing aids, and I just prayed for them, one, two, three, and it wasn't even long praying. It was just momentary, and they all took out their hearing aids, and they flung them up on the stage because they were healed, and they knew they were healed. They could hear perfectly all the sounds in the room, and then there was a woman at the back, and she was the caregiver to an autistic boy who'd been brought to this meeting, and I'd talked with him just briefly at the, at the start of the service. And uh, I, I looked at the back where they had been sitting. And just as the wave had hit the room, I'd seen them both standing and they then they vanished. And so while all this pandemonium is going on, I kind of see her crawling her way up. She was by a brick wall. So she's kind of using, you know, the, the mortar lines of the brick as, as, you know, points of purchase for her fingers. So she kind of pulls herself up. And she's kind of standing there against the wall like this. And then the kid stands up next to her. And I just looked back at him 
And I did like that. And, you know, I kind of raised my eyebrows like I'm doing now as if to say, you know, without any words, is everything okay? And the, the kid looks at me and he gives me a highball sign and the, the caregiver gives him, gives me a highball sign and then boom, they both vanish again. Well, he'd been healed of autism right there in the moment. Wow. Uh, no one even touched him. It just Come happened. Ba boom. So, um, Anyway, that's an example of some of the kinds of things that we've seen. You know, on another occasion, this is a very now almost ancient story, but many years ago when John was alive, we had a meeting like this in the gymnasium one night. Uh, in, the, in those years, the church met in a high school gymnasium. And I was sitting kind of in the upper banks of the bleachers. And as John would have been facing the room, I would have been on the upper right. So again, if you're looking at the stage from the back, this would have been the upper left. But anyway, um, I was up there with a bunch of my friends and there was one woman in our group, young woman. And I mean, she was, she was astonishingly beautiful. I mean, you know, on a 10 scale, she was like a 12, but she never dated anybody and, you know, didn't have a boyfriend at that time. And no one could figure out why she wouldn't date anybody. And, the reason was we found out in that moment was because she'd been born without ovaries. Oh, and she wow, figured wow. nobody is going to want to date me because I can't give children to my husband. So I'm just not going to date. So she'd been living in this kind of cocoon of self-defense for a long time. And John says, you know, the Lord's here. And, you know, if you need something and he's going to move miraculously tonight, this isn't just regular healing. This is miraculous healing. And so, you know, stand up. So this woman stands up and, you know, none of us really knew what her situation was. We just laid hands on her. And all of a sudden this cone, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. It was like there was just a focused ray of divine energy or power that hit her from the head all the way down. And she began to vibrate. And this isn't like she was faking it. She was like, <laughs> she was literally vibrating. And she broke into this sweat and she completely soaked through her clothes. And, and I don't remember now, it's been, like I say, quite a few years, but but it went on for a bit. So let's say maybe maybe 10 minutes or something, maybe 20, I don't know. But anyway, um, so there was this, this just this cone of power that hit her. And, and after a bit, it just <laughs> lifted and she quit shaking. And she kind of pressed on her own abdomen a bit, you know, and she said, I, I feel I feel a bit fat. And so we didn't know what to make of that. But, you know, she went in later and had an examination and she'd actually had ovaries created in that moment of prayer. There had been no ovaries and now there were ovaries and you could see them, you know, in the medical scans, the radiographs. And uh, well, it wasn't too much long after that that she found a boyfriend and got married. But and today she's a grandma, right? She has four kids of her own, and she's a grandma. And um, you know, that's that's an example of just how much God, it, how much God loves us. But I would also say something that a lot of people don't always appreciate: God cares about the small details of our lives. We could say the intimate details because we are talking about ovaries, but but He cares about all the small details of our lives. And I think a lot of times people. You know, they feel unworthy of receiving healing or they think uh, I'm not a big enough name in the kingdom of God or my condition isn't that important. Maybe I should let this go to somebody who needs it more badly than I do. And so, you know, they maybe don't even get in the prayer line or they don't even put up their hand for prayer because they figure, well, I'll just let it be for somebody who has a far greater need than I do. But but in fact, God cares about every single person and he cares about every single detail about every single person on, and so on. with that i would just say jesus said the very hairs of your head are numbered i've got fewer of them now than i used to but but however many are still up there he knows how many i have and can he knows how many you have that? too what's that can we pray can for we that, pray for that? Miracles 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 miracles. hey i'll take it i want it to come back do it now <laughs> <laughs> i think your speaker might be a little high if you could turn it down just a hair because i think it's feeding back just a tiny bit when i talk okay. hold on that's okay uh yeah just enough where you can hear me is that better yeah Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'm not echoing. Awesome. Yeah, I think he can do crazy. Look, I, I'm in a season right now, like you've seen a lot of things, but you know, I, I would call this uh, uh, my beginning days, right? Like you were talking about the old days. This is my old, this is my beginning days. And so uh, 
I just, you know, have started just pressing past what's possible and, and no longer having faith for what I've seen. I, I don't want to limit my faith to my experiences. And I think that's kind of how we break out of that box is, is going, well, this is the only things that can happen, you know, and I, I've been pressing that, that mark and trying to press past for what I've seen before and not limit God to experiences. Um, but rather go, Lord, you can do anything. You can grow hair back. You can melt fat off. And I know you have a great story about fat. I actually have two, two testimonies. One from when you were ministering in Oklahoma city. I remember there was, uh, when we were doing the altar call, I was actually praying. We were doing a deliverance session. Um, and, and many, many people may feel uncomfortable with deliverance. I'm not going to get into that. That's okay. But I do want to tell you this one story. So he's calling up people that need deliverance. And then we get unleashed on everyone to pray, uh, for those people. I prayed over this one girl and I don't even know if I shared this with you, uh, but you had taught on deliverance and I, and I prayed for her. And when I put my hand out and touched her, my son was praying over her and I came over, put my hands on her and she instantly fell backwards. Now notice I didn't say slain in the spirit. Right. Okay. Uh, she instantly fell backwards, but when she hit the floor, it was more of a scream going backwards. And I've learned to recognize that that's not slain in the spirit. I could see the difference. They didn't get touched by the Holy spirit. They're trying to get away from my hand. They're trying to get away from my prayers. So I instantly know there is something in this woman that is trying to get away from me praying. And so if they just throw themselves back and act like they're slain in the spirit, maybe I'll be like, glory, glory, and move on, right? Uh, and so I know something's wrong. So I instantly go down there and I begin to pray for her and I, and, and, and I, and I call it out and say, you have to leave. And instantly there's a, there's a beginning of a manifestation. And I just looked at her and asked her, um, I said, what's your name? And the response, my son had never seen this, so it was great. Her response, I said, what's your name? And she looked at me, with almost like fomenting and said resistance. Huh. And so she called out, you know, the, the demonic thing that was in her called out that name. So you had, you know, uh, taught on deliverance, invited the spirit there to take over. And this lady couldn't, you know, two seconds later, she's, she's, she's fomenting at the mouth and she's calling out the name. I'm resistance. Uh, you know, and, and that began that moment of getting her free and she got free and is free. And, and it was a powerful, powerful moment. And so that's something that happened right there in the altar call with you when you were here at OSI. I do want to point out, I, I want to make sure I do this tonight because this is really big. Last night on the broadcast, so I'm going to take a two second window. You guys want to share out, wait a second. Don't, don't leave now to share, share out. If you're just joining us, share out the broadcast in just a second, but hear this story. Okay. Um, so last night, Shelby, I think you're still on here. I know I've seen your husband commenting. If you guys are commenting together, it's okay. So last night on the broadcast, I uh, called out somebody, their birthday. I said, I think I said March 15th and it ended up being March 14th. So really close. But uh, I said they had a brother named Jonathan. And then I, and when she came on, I started uh, saying that uh, there was there was tension and separation between them. Turns out they had been separated for seven years. They had not spoke in seven years. There's Shelby. So uh, I don't remember all the details. I'm going to clip it. Uh, but her birthday was in May. Yeah, excuse me, May, not March, uh, May. So she's here. So I, I began to prophesy that God wanted to reconcile the family and they had not spoken seven years. And so I went beyond uh, and took a risk. And I think faith is all about taking risks and seeing things happen. Um, and I said this on the broadcast. So all of you guys that were on the broadcast last, last night, you may remember me giving her word. And I said, within seven days, or within the week is the way I phrased it. Within the week, you will hear from your brother. They haven't spoken in seven years. Within the week, you will hear from your brother. She sent me a message a few hours ago, letting me know that she's been talking to her brother and crying all day. Wow. That they wow. have recommunicated and reconnected and, and you know, talked about how do we reconcile and, and have a conversation. So if you could just confirm that, Shelby, I sure would love it. Just put it on here so that everyone can see how uh, God answered that prayer so specifically for you. Just blew me away on how God answers prayer. So I want to share my own testimony that you guys were a part of. It was important for me to share tonight. It has nothing to do with Ken, but it does have something to do with what God uh, is doing. And that's something that you guys all witnessed and heard yesterday. And so she'll confirm it here. Just confirm it and say, yes, I spoke to my brother or whatever you want to say. I just want to post it so everyone can read that from you and can praise God for it. Just absolutely incredible. That's why it's so important, guys, that you share out this broadcast, that you're here every night. There's just amazing, amazing things that happen here. It's going to happen here with Ken. We're, we're super excited. Ken's sharing some, uh, uh, he's not just sharing 
statements about things that have happened so that you can go, wow, I wish it would happen to me. We're going to pray for you. Like that's going to happen. The glory of God's going to show up and, and he's just stirring some faith in the room. Uh, not only for you guys, but in him too, right? Sometimes we need a little pep talk for us too. Uh, you know, and go, yeah, that's right. That's who I am. That's what I carry. That's what I do. So let's go. Right. You remember that. And so I believe that God wants to touch you guys tonight. So do me a favor. If you're just joining us, share out the broadcast, say hi and tell us where you're watching from. Let us know if it's your first time. I have Ken Fish here with us tonight. Just absolutely powerful, wonderful man of God. Uh, there it is. We haven't seen each other in seven years. We hadn't really talked much since then, but I talked to him today and it was amazing. Isn't that incredible? Praise God. Wow. Uh, and and trust me, guys, I'm just going to be in full disclosure. When I said that to her, they hadn't really spoken seven years. And I said, within seven days, that was a big risk for me, even in my own heart. I'm like, oh, Lord, I hope that's true. I'm going to look really silly in seven days. Like, I hope that, uh, you just got to make that happen because I just put my, oh, boy. Like, that was a little intimidating to make a, a claim like that. And for it to happen in less than 24 hours, only God. Amen. So that, yeah, that's, Amen. we had lots of healings yesterday, but I wanted to highlight that one particular story. Cause I think it's amazing. So uh, Ken, tell us kind of like what, what's going on now? What's the plan for this year? What do you feel like God's doing with you or with the nation or like, what, what do you feel like is stirring? You well, can answer that however you want. Things we could talk about. We could, we could take a lot of time to discuss all that. Whatever you feel like is kind of stirring on your heart. That's just like an open-ended question. Go wherever you want. Yeah. I, well, I mean, everyone's aware of the challenges we're facing right now. Um, you know, as a nation, we've got COVID that's essentially running rampant. I, I won't quite say out of control, but but it is running rampant. And uh, it's it's a strange thing to think that we have one of the highest rates of it of anywhere in the world. Um, I was reading some stuff on that today, and it's mainly because I think we've always taken it for granted that as a nation, you know, we have the best medicine and, you know, we were sort of the top of the pyramid that way. I, I, I'm cognizant that not everybody in America has equally good medicine, but relative to the rest of the world, our medical practices and our hospitals and our infrastructure are some of the very best. And it's one of the reasons people like to come here. So um, it's a strange thing we find ourselves in that, that we are not on top of this and have already wrestled it to ground. And of course, that has all kinds of political ramifications, which we don't need to go into. But it's it's certainly creating uh, its own issues within the political process. And then, um, you know, beyond that, uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's the same issue. But right alongside of it, uh, we've got all this racial tension, and a lot of people are saying, "What what is going on?" I mean, what's happening with America? And and the thing that I have been saying pretty consistently since March is that the world as we have been accustomed to living it. And I say it that way because I really want to make it clear that, you know, sometimes we become habituated to something and that something is itself an artificial state of reality. And even then, sometimes it it lasts a long time. And the longer it lasts, the easier it is to say this is normal. So I think what we have maybe been thinking of as normal has not been the normal, but we've been living in a season of extreme grace as a nation. But, you know, Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse found in Matthew uh, 24, and it goes on into chapter 25, Jesus is preaching on the Mount of Olives. And uh, this is not the Sermon on the Mount. It's a totally different time in his life, totally different mountain. But um, anyway, he's on the Mount of Olives, and he says you know, when you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it ought not to be, uh, then let the reader understand. So it's interesting, Matthew is writing this down, and he's talking about this message that Jesus preached to mainly his disciples. I don't think there was a big crowd there. And, but he says, let the reader understand. So pay heed. The abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not to be. Well, I think for a lot of people that are on this broadcast right now, um, if you've had any kind of background in kind of American revivalism or fundamentalism or conservative Christianity or evangelicalism, somewhere along the way, you probably were taught something about Daniel's weeks and we've got 62 weeks and then we've got seven more weeks. And then, you know, each week is a year. And 
So there's this whole thing that gets spun out, and most of that comes out of the uh, writings of an of an Englishman named Charles Darby, who lived in the latter part of the 1800s, latter part of the 19th century. So in round numbers, he lived maybe 125 years ago or something like that, which in the scheme of things is not that long ago, but it's long enough that nobody alive remembers him, that's for sure. So um, anyway, Darby was responsible for the creation of something that was hugely influential in the early 20th century called the Schofield Study Bible. And my grandmother used one. And most people that have had any history in American revivalist type Christianity, and it doesn't much matter if you were a Baptist or a Wesleyan or a you know, United Methodist or even a Presbyterian, you probably were familiar with the Schofield Bible. And then mid 20th century, a man at Dallas Theological Seminary named Charles Caldwell Ryrie he kind of updated the Schofield Bible and came out with the Ryrie Study Bible, and it kind of picked up where Schofield had left off. And with this, really, we discipled multiple generations of Americans into this mentality of something is going to happen and the abomination that causes desolation still needs to be built in order for Jesus to come back. And what I've been saying is that... Um, Actually, the abomination that causes desolation is in existence right now. Wow. And not only has it been in existence, or is it in, in existence right now, it's actually been in existence for a long time. A long time, like 1,300 years long. Wow. And most people are unaware because we just aren't trained to think about world history, and we don't have the the, the framing reference lines that are there clearly in scripture. So um, with that, given that the abomination that causes desolation is already in place, what I've been saying is what we're seeing with COVID, what we're seeing with the upheavals, uh, the racial unrest, and there's all the things that are going on, uh, what we're really seeing is what Jesus called the beginning of sorrows. This is the first of the sorrows. And, you know, we're coming into a time of great difficulty. We're coming into a time of challenge that we have not seen before. And Jesus said, unlike any since the first civilization, since the beginning of, of mankind and the settling of cities. And he even says it will be so severe that were it not for the sake of the elect, meaning those who are called of God and believe in, in Jesus, were it not for their sake, no one would survive. And so when, I, when people say, what's going on? I'm like, well, the world as you know it has ended. Not to bring you bad news, but, but don't <laughs> expect things to go back to the way they were. And people are always like, what? Wait a minute, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't, no one ever said that to me before. I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know. You know, they sort of get really stunned by that. But it, it's all clearly laid out in Scripture. And, and what Daniel, the prophet, says in chapter 12, is and you know someone can read this if they want to i i can recite it pretty well because i've taught it a lot but um and the angel gabriel is giving revelation to daniel and daniel is recounting it and gabriel says that you know this will in the end of time and he says it's the time when the righteous will rise unto eternal life and the and the unjust will be uh raised to everlasting condemnation meaning the fires of hell Right, right. Uh, it's it's in that interval of time that these things will come into play. So it is it is unmistakable in Daniel 12 that these are referring to things that deal with the end of time. And um, Gabriel gives Daniel the revelation and Daniel writes it down and it goes this way. It says, from the time of the abolition of the evening sacrifice until the coming of the abomination that causes desolation, there will be 1,290 days. Well, yeah, sometimes 11. a day is a day, and sometimes, prophetically speaking, a day is a year. For example, uh, when the children of Israel spied out the land for 40 days, literal days, meaning 24-hour periods, uh, they came back, they gave a bad report. Ten of them did, two did not. So the ten who gave a bad report, they persuaded the people of Israel not to go into the promised land. And God says, then I'm going to assign you 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, yet beyond what you've already done. Um, and I'm doing this a day or a year for every day. 
I mean, it says it right there in the scripture. Yeah. yeah. So that's one place where we have the, the prophetic analogy principle of, you know, a day can be a year. So if we take 1,290 days and now turn that into a year, well, when did the evening sacrifice get abolished in Daniel's time? Remember, Daniel's a Babylonian captive. He was taken captive from Jerusalem, and he probably went into captivity right around the year 604 BC. Might have been 605, could have been 603, but somewhere right in there is when he was taken captive. And, and the city would later fall to Nebuchadnezzar's armies in 586 BC. Most people don't think about dates and things. And so when I'm throwing these dates out for a lot of people, they're, you know, their eyes kind of glaze over, but I'm, I'm trying to be very clear about what I'm saying. So if people are wanting to do so, they can jot down these dates and kind of figure all this out after the fact or check the, check the numbers. But anyway, Daniel goes into captivity around about 604. Um, and in 586 BC, the uh, city falls to Nebuchadnezzar's army. Well, remember, you count backward when you're in BC years. So you're counting down from 604 to 586. And said another way, Daniel's been in captivity now, you know, nearly 20 years by the time the city falls. And he, he was by this time a high-ranking official in the Babylonian regime. He, he knew what was going on. He's one of the most powerful people in the kingdom. And so he would have heard the reports of the fall of the city as the couriers, the military messengers were coming back from the battlefront, bringing news to the king that we have succeeded in breaching the walls of Jerusalem. And so the angel has told Daniel from the time of the abolition of the evening sacrifice. Well, when did that happen? We know on the Hebrew calendar, it was the ninth of Av, the month of A.V. Av uh, in the year 586 BC. And in fact, as it turns out, that morning they did offer the sacrifice, but they never got to offer the evening sacrifice because between morning and evening, the city fell and, and Nebuchadnezzar's troops made it all the way to the Temple Mount, got on top of that temple, and they, they stopped the offering of the evening sacrifice. So wow. we know the exact day. And this is the nature of true prophecy. It can be absolutely this, this accurate. All right, well, let's keep going with the story. So the 9th of Av, 586 BC, is the start of this number line. And from the time of the abolition of the evening sacrifice, so from the 9th of Av, 586 BC, until the coming of the abomination that causes desolation, there will be 1,290, now I'm going to say years, not days. And so if you count down from uh, minus 586 and you, you go 1,290 years, remembering that there is no year zero, there is no year zero. You go from minus one to plus one as the years change from BC to AD. If you go 1,290 years, you get to the year 705 AD on our Gregorian calendar, which is a solar calendar. And in the year 705 AD, the Umayyad Caliph uh, finished building a complex on top of the Temple Mount that included the one that has the Golden Dome. We all know this picture. It's one of the most iconic pictures in the world. And it also included another temple that's not as widely paid attention to. It's on the southern end of the Temple Mount. It's very close to the Golden Dome. It has a, uh, a, a dark gray uh, cover to it, dome on top of it. And um, that mosque is called the Al-Kibli Mosque. And it is right above the steps, which in old Jerusalem would have led up to the Temple Mount. And so it was in 705 that the the complex was completed, and so the abomination that causes desolation was in place. It's an abomination because it's a pagan shrine, and it's built, well, the gold one is built right over the Holy of Holies, and um, wow. and it causes desolation because as long as it's there, you can't have a Jewish temple. Now, wow. for us as Christians, we're not so concerned about that temple. We don't need it. We know the blood of Jesus is sufficient. But here's the thing. If you're a Jew, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. So 1,290 days gets us to 705 AD. So from that year up until now, there has been an abomination that causes desolation. But then in verse 11 of chapter 12 of Daniel, Daniel 12, 11, Gabriel says to him, and blessed is the man who endures 1,335 days more. Uh, verse, uh, 12. verse 12. Yeah. Uh, sorry, verse 12. 11, right, 11 was the 12. Sorry. sorry. Um, thank you for fixing that. You're calling me out with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'm not that right, scholarly. So, You're smarter than me. Well, but here we go. So we were at 705, and we add 1335 to that, and we get the year 
2040. Wow. Where are we now? 2020. Yeah. yeah. And we're late in that. 2020. We're, we're getting ready to wrap up 2020. And so what that's telling us is 20 years from now, I don't know if it's early in the year or if it's late in the year, but 20 years from now, something really big and important in the eschatological timescale is going to happen. Now, I'm not saying it's the return of Jesus. I am not saying that. A lot of people have called for the return of Jesus, and Jesus said of the day and hour, no one knows. Not even the Son of Man knows. Only the Father in heaven knows, and he ain't telling. So I am specifically not making that mistake of saying it's the return of Jesus, but that is certainly an, an option. But there are some other options. How about the Armageddon War? How about the revelation of the Antichrist? And Jesus said that in those times leading up to that thing, the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet, pay heed, it's during those times that it will be a time of distress unlike any the world has seen and but for the sake of those who believe in Jesus, when, and God will therefore, as it were, hold back some of what might have come forth. But for our sakes, the world, nobody would be able to survive it. And so with that, I'm saying COVID is the beginning of sorrows. These are the beginnings of birth pangs in this time frame that we're looking at. Now, I will just say one other thing now that I've laid all that out. Um, well, two things. Number one, please do not be frightened by what I'm saying. Jesus said... When these things begin to happen, look up and lift up for your redemption draws near. So these should not be a cause for us to get all frightened and withdrawn and anxious and all the rest of it. Instead, we should actually be saying, praise God, we get to go home soon. It's going to might be a little bit of a rough exit, but, but it's going to be okay. We're going to be with him and soon we'll be with him in victory and in glory. So that's the first thing I want to say. And then the second thing I want to say is... I just did all the calculations using what we call the solar year, a year that's based on the full rotation of the Earth around the sun. But if you actually number your years using the lunar calendar, which is the way most Jewish numbering is done, not all, the way most Babylonian numbering is done, not all, the way most uh, Persian numbering is done, not all, if you switch all of that over and make it all... So, uh, lunar years rather than solar years, that year 2020 actually becomes 2022. Interesting. So I think it's the solar answer, not the lunar answer. But people are saying, what does all this mean? What's going on? And it's like, this is what Jesus prophesied. That's what's going on. Wow. You know, so so um, let me let me propose a hypothetical question here. Uh, yeah. I personally I, I personally love people that are scholarly. Uh, I am scholarly, but I I'm only scholarly because there's an Internet age. Uh, Dewey Decimal <laughs> System did not work for me. I give up like I don't want to have to go. You know, if I can't find it on the Internet, I'm scholarly and I have low tolerance of patience. So if it takes me more than two minutes to look it up, I'm out. So uh, that's what restricts me a lot. But OK, so let, let's let's take these numbers that you've analyzed. So you got 705 and you have this uh, abomination of desolation that happens in the Jewish temple. Is it possible that that 2040, while you're not making the suggestion that that's Jesus coming back, it is highly possible or probable to say that that also means that something in the Jewish nation will happen again in 2040, that that'll be a, a kind of a moment. I mean, you have the celebration of Israel becoming a nation in 1948. So right in that time frame, uh, and like you were saying, lunar, solar, but you have this time frame that suggests around the the the, the century mark that something you know of them celebrating a hundred years, it starts to stir something up. Perhaps you know, I'm just yeah, that's exactly correct. And in fact, um, it's interesting. I, I, I left this out for the sake of brevity, which is probably hard to believe because I wasn't that brief. But uh, <laughs> but I left it out for the sake of brevity. Um, in that, in the first few verses of Daniel 12, and I don't, you could find it quickly. I don't remember what it is. It might be around verse five or six, but, um, but Gabriel is giving the, the word to Daniel, but he says, at that time, Michael, the great guardian of your people will stir himself. Well, it's not the exact hour yet that he's Number describing one. that. That comes yeah. a little bit later. Where is it? What verse? Verse one at the, at the time, Michael, the great prince oh, okay. who protects hey. your people will arise. I probably would have done better to pull out my Bible and read it directly. Hey, no, but. I think everyone is, is loving. I'm, I'm following you with that, but the, just, just your, 
it's not just that you carry an anointing and you're healing and prophecy and all that, but the fact that you are such a steward of the word, you are such a, a, a reader of the word, you know, the word, you know where it's at. I mean, that, that's, that makes a statement to everyone like, Hey, p- turn your ears on and listen to what this man has to say. It's not all just clouds and fluffy feelings. Like he yeah. he's grounded in the word. Okay. So the, what Gabriel says at that time, uh, the great guardian of your nation, Michael, the Prince will arise. Well, Look, Israel had been in exile with no nation since the Romans had destroyed the city again in the year 70 AD. That was the year that the, that the city was destroyed by the Romans. And, um, and it's interesting also, by the way, that about two years later, Mount Vesuvius erupted and destroyed the equivalent of the Roman Riviera slash Las Vegas uh, in the yeah. aftermath of that destruction. But anyway, um, let's keep going. So... Um, Michael will stir himself, the great guardian of your people. Well, as you just said, in 1948, Israel is reconstituted as a nation. Uh, Then you get the war in 67, you get the 73 war, and there have been some others since then, but but those are the big ones that that all Jews really are conscious of. So what happened? Michael stirred himself, and Israel came back together. So the very marker that Gabriel had given to Daniel and that he recorded in chapter 12 actually came to pass. Michael was stirred. And now he's, you know, keeping watch over the nation in these days. And as you said, if you run from 48 up to up to 2040, you're getting right close to a century. And so these are really interesting times in which we live. They, I'm not saying they'll all be easy, but at the same time, imagine this. We were selected by God to live now. We could yeah. have lived anywhere else in the history of the world. And God said, I, I pick you. I pick Linda Sasha Kroom, I picked Melinda Todd and Raquel Duca and Jesse West and Ronald Norwood and Drew Spivey and Ren Shuffman and Ken Fish to live in this hour. Come on. With all of this, there must be something that is for us to do. And and so, you know, praise God that we are getting to see what many wise men and prophets long to see, and they were not able to do so. That that's unbelievable. So I could actually see, I'm just, I'm just hypothetically here, of course, but I can see the idea of right around just before Israel turns a hundred years old, that that might make the enemy mad. It might make the enemies of Israel mad. I mean, they, they want to destroy that. And the idea what, what you talked about the six day war and all this that happened, you know, six great uh, Arab nations came against Israel, a young country with no standing army, with no weapons uh, and were able to defeat them. That is a blow. Uh, that they have lived with. And, and the idea of allowing Israel to turn a hundred may not sit well with the enemy. It may not sit it's well. Possible, and with these right. nations, the idea that Israel is going to get to celebrate a hundred years, a centurion mark, you know, centurion mark of a hundred years and stamp that easily is, is understandable that that could, that alone without world dynamics and, and, and geopolitical situations happening, that that alone could stir up trouble by itself so this makes sense right and there's some other things going on on the world stage which i would say are um well they're not they're not quite as locked in prophetically but but they have prophetic inkling on them you know most people are at least familiar with the language of gog and magog and uh, all of that well you know israel for the last 50 years or so has had a very good relationship with the nation of turkey and Turkey has been a NATO alliance member, and um, although it's Islamic, it's been the southern, southeastern kind of shoulder of the NATO alliance and has guarded particularly all the shenanigans of what the Russians were up to during the Cold War. Well, then the you know Cold War ends, and um, you know it's, it, there's been some talk lately, and I, I'm not myself 100% sure that this is right on the money, but I think it is. That's why I'm mentioning it. Let me say that again. I think this is right, but I'm not 100% sure. That's why I'm mentioning it. But if it turns out that no, okay, well then no. But I have heard from more than one source that there is a secret pact or compact that exists between Russia, China, and Iran, such that if any of them gets attacked by any of the nations of the West, then they all come to each other's aid. Well, you know, the, the tension between Iran and Israel, that's known to everybody. That's quite obvious. And Iran is a state backer of the Hezbollah in the in the uh, Lebanese and Syrian uh, northern border area. Um, 
And we know this language of Gog and Magog. We know about um, Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. And so, you know, all of these are regions in the mountains of Turkey moving into the mountains of Russia in what we call the Transcaucasus, the area that's today Azerbaijan and um, parts of Armenia and Georgia and those countries. And so it's interesting that, you know, we hear about this large army, 200 million is what John calls it in the book of Revelation, that comes from the east, and this is making way for the kings of the east. Well, you know, the Chinese could field an army of 200 million. I don't know if the Russians could, and for sure the Iranians couldn't, but if they're in alliance together and they come sweeping down through that land bridge that's bordered on the one side by the Caspian Sea uh, and on the other side by the Black Sea, you could actually have that scenario unfold. Yeah in this time frame and note that in this hour literally in the last couple of years turkey has backed away from most of its commitments to nato it has begun buying com block weapons russian weapons particularly um and of late this has not been picked up in the western media but this part is absolutely right this one there's no doubt about this piece um the president of turkey erdogan he has been saying it is his intention to finish with the armenian people what his ancestors started now, for those who don't know Whoa. the history of that part of the world, that would mean nothing, so I'll unpack that one. Yes. But in the First World War, not the Second wow. World War, the First World War, the, Ar the Armenians were genocided by the Turks. And actually, although the numbers were lower, there were millions killed, but although the numbers were lower than the Jewish Holocaust, in fact, the percentage of Armenia that was liquidated by the Turks during that period of time was greater than what Hitler did to the Jews of Europe. So again, yeah. the absolute numbers are lower, but the percentage of the total was higher. And so um, it was during this same time, Hitler had a couple of his key guys, including Himmler, there in Turkey watching all this go on. And they were sending cables back about this genocide. And in the end, Hitler said, who after all remembers the Armenian genocide? We will do to the Jews what they did to the Armenians and nobody will care. And so what happened there became a pretext and now in this hour, 2020, just in the last month, Erdogan, the president of Turkey, having backed away from his NATO commitments and aligning enough with the Russians that he's using Russian weapons in his military, he is now saying, it is my intention to finish off the Armenians because my ancestors did not. So when you look at all this, it's like, this is actually happening. I mean, the very thing that Jesus prophesied, the very thing Daniel prophesied, the very thing Gabriel gave to Daniel, this isn't like out there somewhere. And why is it not out there somewhere? You know, people have always thought, well, it's 50 more years down the road. It's because the abomination that causes desolation is already in place. Wow. There is no trigger needed. It's already there. And we live in these times. God has chosen us to be the people who will bear the witness to the gospel, probably with, you know, some difficulty, but, but at the same time, what an immense privilege to be alive in this hour. Um, that's, that's just immense. What a, what a fantastic teaching. And some, some of you might go like, oh my gosh, there was a lot of numbers and all that. But then when the point landed, um, that, and a lot of people don't know, you're right. A lot of people don't know about the Armenian genocide and, you know, they, they don't even know it existed, but it was a pretext for Hitler. That's absolutely right. I'm a Jew. So trust me, I know about that, that he used, you know, that, that as a pretext, nobody even knows that there was an Armenian genocide. If you asked a hundred people, maybe one might know that that even took place. It is just amazing uh, how evil has risen, killed so many. And look, be, before every great move of God, there's usually some kind of genocide, right? Yeah, that's have, right. Really yeah, true. you have Moses and, and Jesus. All the yep. two-year-olds get killed before salvation comes. So the, a lot of people, they get afraid of this end-time type conversation or just, just trouble season type conversations. But the truth is, is that th those seasons are markers. And I'm actually going to be revealing some revelation the Lord gave me next week with somebody who got the same vision and posted it uh, publicly. We both posted it within hours of each other on the same day and had the same exact revelation about the warring season we're in leading up to revival. It's going to be incredible. Wow. Uh, yeah. it, just absolutely incredible. And, and so I don't want to give too much away, but it's going to be absolutely incredible. But these uh, revival seasons and outpouring seasons are always remarkable. Remember when Jesus said, what's the sign that you'll come back, free the world, bring peace? You know, they're asking him, what's the sign that you're coming back to, to hoorah victory? And he said, look for trouble. 
<laughs> I'm simplifying it. He's like, right. the, the sign for that is trouble. So right. many people get freaked out by things that look like the end times. And it's like, and everyone's trying to fight it. And I'm going, bring it on. I hope the Antichrist shows up. I hope Bill Gates has a chip. Like, I like all of this <laughs> nonsense, right? And I'm like, please let it be that. And they're like, what's wrong with you? And I said, I want Jesus to come back. I am in no way trying to stop my savior from returning. And I don't know why the rest of you are getting all riled up about it. Just be like, woohoo, going home. So this is good news. It's not bad news that Ken is sharing with us. It means that the, the word of God is true. The word of God is coming true. The word of God is true in your life. And it means if you can trust dates like that, moments, times, dates, stamps like that in the word of God from thousands of years ago, by the way, from desert wandering nomads who should not yeah. have known these things. If right. you can trust the desert wandering nomads of BC land, Okay, that knew and, and could accurately foretell what was coming in your future. You can trust that there is a God who loves you, who wants to encounter you, who wants to make your life blessed, who wants to see you healed and set free, who actually wants a relationship with you. If that those details are true, then the rest of it about how much he loves you is true, too. That That's it. is good news. That's right. Let me just say one other thing in all that we were talking about, just because it, it ties it off. If Erdogan proceeds to do what he is threatening to do, and I, I, I actually believe him in part because there's been a lot of skirmishing along the border with Armenia between the Azeri army and the Armenian army of late. Here's the thing. The Azeris are mostly Muslim. The Turks are Muslim. Um, the Iranians are Muslim. So Armenia is surrounded on all sides by Muslim nations. Um, and it is itself a Christian nation. It was the first nation converted to Christianity in the year 301, Wow. King Tiridates became the first Christian uh, king to accept Christianity. This is before the conversion of Constantine and the legalization of Christianity within the Roman Empire. So here in what was then the far eastern reaches of Rome, among what they called the Scythian peoples, uh, they have this conversion of a king and an entire kingdom comes to the Lord. And through all these centuries, the Armenians have clung to their faith. Through all these centuries, they have clung to their faith. And they are a bulwark against a sweep down through that land bridge between the, the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, such that if Erdogan makes his move and, and eliminates the Armenians, then the way is cleared for this coming of this huge army that, that was prophesied uh, in the book of uh, Revelation. And so, you know, we are really that close to it. And I, I don't want to be one of those like end time apocalyptic preachers. It, it's really that close. Any moment. It's not actually any moment, but any year now. Yeah, this could happen. And if this unfolds over an 18 month period, it could really be that our trigger point is 2022. And maybe that big cataclysmic thing is that rushing in of these multiple armies from the east, the, the making way of the kings of the east. And, you know, they, they come down through Syria and they come down through the north, through Lebanon. And the next thing you know, where are they? At the very northern part of Israel in what is called Har Magadon, the Valley of Armageddon. So, I mean, this is not contrived. This is an eminently believable for anyone who understands history, military strategy, and world politics. It's just a question of, well, watch the newspaper. Watch your news feed. And in particular, maybe zero in on some things that deal with what's going on in Armenia, because it is it is our closest ally in that specific part of the world. They are holding the line, but they are surrounded by armies themselves. Wow, that's just incredible. What an interesting uh, um, dynamic. What an interesting possibility. I love that's it. Right. Yeah, absolutely love it. What a, what so a good teacher. I guess a lot of our people here are... Uh, kind of this is news to them <laughs> but you know th this is one of the problems i really feel that we have in our current world we just don't preach the word enough i mean it's all in there and so we need to we, we need to bring these things to the front so people are aware of them and even though i miscited a few verses i was on the money with chapter 12 and there's only about 12 verses in it so you don't have to read much to <laughs> see all this and you then you have unpack the it and you realize, oh my gosh this is exactly the way it was prophesied and, you know, it was prophesied in round numbers 2,600 years ago. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. I, I just the way I, I think 
just the way you, you talked about the 705. I think that one for me just like landed that that's yeah. when the dome and, and, and the, the desolation happened to the temple mount, because that's God's house. That was God's place that there, it doesn't matter if it's Jewish or Christian or any of that, that's a desolation. You're right. That's an abomination to go and build something on God's house. Um, that was committed to him. That that's the, the Holy of Holies. I mean, we're, that's pretty serious. So I think the fact that the numbers line up with that is a is a um, remarkable thing that kind of stirs your faith. And if and if that's the reality, and some of you, as as Ken is saying that, it, it might be a teaching moment for you. But I think there's a stirring in your spirit even right now to realize that complacent Christianity or casual Christianity doesn't really work. It, it just doesn't work in this season. Correct. The, the, you, we have to, we have to stop being couch Christians. Okay. I know, I know that we're probably all sitting on the couch right now. Okay. Watching this. But what I mean by that is that we cannot just <laughs> live our faith by absorbing other things and never pouring out onto other people that we have to know the time and we have to be able to go out there and pour out the love where there's darkness. There's always light. See light and darkness contrast each other for a reason. And I've talked about this and I'm going to be talking about it more. You never buy a diamond. When you buy a diamond, when they go and try to show you how beautiful the diamond is, they never put it up against a white piece of paper. They never do that. They put it up against the black velvet, right? Because they want something that will not reflect the light that's as contrasting as possible so you can see the beauty of the diamond's light, okay? And the beauty of the diamond. Every season where God is about to pour out radically, pour out revival, pour out power, there is always a contrasting darkness that shows up in the world to show that the light of God can chase off the darkness. Uh, the light shows up to chase the darkness, to overcome the darkness. And so don't be worried about the darkness that's coming. Realize that that also means there is a great outpouring of God's power, love, mercy, miracles. All of that will be evident in this season. It will be highly evident. It's a season of, of contrast, which means glory. Okay. That's what's going to happen. Everybody wants to see, everybody wants to see a sea part. Everyone wants to see the red sea part. Nobody wants an army to chase them. That's just a fact. Nobody wants the army to chase them. Every, everybody wants to see God call down a plague. Nobody wants to be in slavery. Yeah. Everybody wants to see a miracle. Nobody wants to need one. All right. That's just the reality. And so if you need a miracle, there's a contrasting moment where God can set you free. But here's the truth. God is not interested just in you getting better. He's interested in his relationship with you. And so if having that contrasting season means that he gets his relationship back with you, I think God's all in for that. He yeah. doesn't mind having to give a, wait for a little darkness so he can expose the light and bring you back into relationship with him. And, and I mean, so if you if think about the history of the Jews, right? They go into captivity. People say, how could God do that to his own people? The whole point of it was that they would come back to him because they'd forgotten him. So it's, it's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. You know, like your kids, right? They start, they, they turn into, you know, they get older, 18 years old, 19 years old. They start thinking they know everything. And you're like, go out there and fall down a few times. And then you'll listen to dad again. And you let them go out there and like, oh, car broke down. Bills are due. Sorry, your problem. And then they go, I should have listened to dad. And then they come back. Okay, I realized. <laughs> You have wisdom. I need to, you know, and, and then they, they're they ready to listen again. And so sometimes that's just what happens. All right. See if you can do it on your own. Tough guy, go for it. And so God's no different. He's looking for a relationship with you first and period. And some of you guys, that that happens tonight. You're, you're already making a decision right now that you need to be in right standing with God, that you can't just play around with your life forever and say, when I'm old and gray, maybe I'll make a decision to follow God. You, you can't do that anymore. And besides that, the worst thing that happens to anybody, I think, is they spend most of their life away from God, come to God towards, towards the later half, and then realize how much time they lost. Um, uh, one, one of my dearest friends, uh, Dan Mooney, who is the first year pastor of the students at uh, Randy Clark's Global Awakening School. Uh, Dan Mooney is the first year pastor over there. One of my dearest friends in the whole world. I remember when he first got fully encountered with Randy Clark and he was actually a student there. He called me one day and he just kept repeating over and over. Ren, 60 years I've wasted. 60 years I've wasted. I'd never heard so much hope and despair in one man's voice at the same time. He literally sounded like he was going to break down crying from, from despair at the same time I've never heard him so hopeful. In the same sentence, Ren, 60 years I've wasted. 
And he says, I didn't know that God could do these things. And he had come to a, a reality of how powerful God was and how he had missed all of the signs and wonders and potential that was built into us from God and how he was never going to miss another moment again. He's now the first year pastor uh, on staff at Randy Clark's uh, ministry school. And, and he realized I'd wasted 60 years playing church, being a Christian, but never, you know, having a form of godliness, but denying the power within. And right. so now all of a sudden he's operating the power, seeing blind eyes open, seeing the radical moves of God, what was available to him. And he's like, I missed it for 60 years. And there was so much remorse in him for mix, missing it, but hope for the future. Do, you, some of you right now, you're younger. You don't need that. You don't need that remorse. You don't need that regret. Right now is the moment. It's stirring in your heart to get right with God, to get serious about your walk with God and live a life of power and authority in relationship and intimacy with God. That's where you need to be. And so I just think that's available to you. And I think that Ken has so articulated this stirring I, in my spirit. Like, I want to get right with God again, too. Like, I'm like, it's coming. I need to be right. <laughs> it's really true. <laughs> yeah, it does. And, you know, the thing is, further to all of that, Jesus said in those times, um, you know, people would be marrying and given in marriage. And, you know, two people would be, uh, you know, grinding at the wheel or working in the field. So, in other words, life will go on. And yet it's not normal life because of the times in which it is. And there's all this distress going on. And then all of a sudden, whammo, you know, and then the coming of the son of man will be like lightning flashing across the sky as lightning flashes from the east to the west. So will it also be in the days of the coming of the son of man. And then they will look upon him whom they have pierced and they will mourn. So this is... I mean, this is the times in which we're living. And like I say, if you're on a lunar year, it might be as soon as like, you know, uh, I'll round it off and say we, we might have maybe 30 months. And if you're on a solar year, well, then we might have about 20 years. But but either way, these are these are really, really interesting times. And this is not a dress rehearsal. I know a lot of us went through that all that Jesus is coming back any day stuff in the 1970s. Um, that was the dress rehearsal. This one's the real play. Wow. That's amazing. Hallelujah. Well, we want to show why Jesus coming back is so powerful and so relevant. Here's the truth, guys. Jesus coming back, he's here right now. He might not be here in physical form. We're talking about scripture being um, uh, coming to light in front of you. But the truth is, is that scripture is still valid today that says that God wants to heal you. God wants to touch you. God wants to know you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. He wants to speak to you. And one of the things we do on this broadcast is that we definitely pray for you guys. Uh, we want to make sure that we're praying for you this whole time. We've had our prayer team on here as you've listed requests for illnesses in your body, things that are going on. They've been replying to your comments. So if you haven't seen those, check your comments. There's a reply there from our pastoral teams that are praying for you right now and seeing healing, but we want to make sure that we're we're ministering to you as well. What a, what an amazing teaching. But I know that Ken doesn't, I told you, he not only does he carry the anointing, but he's also a scholar. Like he, and I think you get it why I said that now. Uh, you know, there's a reason why you, you went to my second choice Ivy League school. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had a scholarship you know, to Stanford. Edwards was the first uh, president of Princeton. That's pretty good. I had a scholarship to Stanford. I didn't go. So that shows how smart I am. So, uh, uh, but you're I, still wearing the Cardinal. I, yeah, I was, yeah, that's true. I didn't go. I didn't go. I'm not a graduate of Stanford. I just got a scholarship to Stanford. I never, I never got to take advantage of that. I actually was going to chase marine biology when I was younger. That's where I was going to go after. And the Lord called me into ministry. So now I don't study fish. I study, uh, I catch fish, fisher of men. That so Yep. Yeah, same thing. So me and Peter got a lot in common, but I, we want to pray for you guys. We want to we want to know if the, there's anything. So I'm just going to release Ken if he wants to prophesy over you or if he just wants to pray for some healing, whatever he's feeling stirred up tonight. But I just feel like like this is a serious moment. And and if you've had a day, shake it off. Jesus is coming. If you've had a week, shake it off. Jesus is coming like this. This God of ours is real and he wants to impact you now. You're not waiting for 40 years for him to show up, 20 years for him to show up. He shows up now. Okay. Scripture is true and it's true right now too. And we see it on this broadcast every night. I mean, I, as Ken was talking, I threw up testimony after testimony of you guys saying how you were healed last night, this week. You know, it's like amazing what God is doing on this broadcast. I'm totally blown away. So if, if you know someone needs prayer, this is a good moment right now, even though we're in the second half, you know, the, the later half of the show, uh, the broadcast to share it out. So if you're just joining us, you have not shared it out, hit share, share it as a public post. We're going to pray for some people for a few minutes here and just see the power of God wreck this place. Amen.
Amen. Come on. So if you're ready to receive something from God, just say, I'm ready. Just say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Just post well, that in the start, comments. I'm going to start with something here because I know whatever you want to do works. It takes a, a couple of minutes for someone to respond specifically, type in what they've got and, you know, come back to us. It's just that's how long it takes. The yeah, usually about 20 seconds or so they'll be behind us. OK, um, there's a woman on the broadcast and at 713 she posted, I need physical healing. Uh, her name's Teresa Wilson. Now, I looked at her name going by on the feed, I don't know, an hour ago or something, 45 minutes ago. And I felt like the Lord gave me just a simple question. Teresa, what do you need healing for? So, oh, I see her up. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm so, on. Teresa, tell us what you need healing for so we can pray for you. Because I feel like the, the bar is open and you can order what you want tonight. Ooh, that's a good word. That's an open heaven word right there. I believe yeah, we're in an right. open heaven season. Am I bars open. about bars on a Christian broadcast? Hey, I don't know. But anyway, we I'm all know fine. what a bar is and we know how it works. So we'll just I played in a rock that. band. We're not that we're not that religious. So yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I saw your name go by. So you can respond to me as you uh, as you as soon as you can and we'll pray for you. Yeah, absolutely. Hallelujah. And hey, then guys, the other thing is I feel like there's a a woman and I don't know what this is because I'm I'm looking at my own screen as I'm talking to everybody and I have this it's almost like a virtual congregation but if I were looking out in the congregation and I don't know what this means I don't I, I don't know why I'm even getting this but if she were in my congregation as I was preaching she would be to the back and a little bit on my right which would actually put her we would say back left Maybe that's where she commonly sits in church. Ooh, uh, interesting. Rather than here in this, because you know this is a virtual broadcast; people are everywhere. Um, but whoever you are, you have a you have a. I think he's a family member, or maybe he's a relative. Maybe he's not an immediate family member. Oh, you've got the neuropathy in the feet, Teresa. Okay, and several things. In your ovary. Good. Okay, because I had a word. Uh, for a, a sister nodule on the ovary and for neuropathy in the feet. I didn't get all the rest of these, but um, so you must be the one and that must be why the Lord gave you the carte blanche. So we'll come right back to you in a moment. Back to this woman who sits again. I think if she were facing the stage in her normal home church, she'd probably commonly sit back left. Uh, maybe not all the way in the very back, but directionally towards the back. Uh, and to the left of the center line of the room. This woman, I don't have her name, but I, I believe she has a, a, a family member named David. And she's been praying for David to come to faith. And I want to specifically pray for her that that would happen this week. Hmm. Okay, so back sits in the back left at church. I and, think so. uh, family member that da David. Uh, it could be the back right because you're looking at it opposite. But if you sit in the back uh, right. and you have a David in your family, just say that. Say, I sit in the back. Just say, uh, I sit in the back and I have a family member or, or David, yes, praying. So yeah. and let us know who he is. David, brother, praying. You don't have to make big, long sentences, but you just give us the details of how that is. And, and we'll highlight you there for sure. So I'll watch these right. as you pray for Teresa. All right. So meanwhile, we're going to pray for Teresa and I, I can see her profile picture. So I'm going to put my thumb on your forehead, Teresa. That's, that's the closest I'm going to get to laying hands on you tonight. Come on. But anyway, only God can heal my eye disease, neuropathy, and feet, bad pain, cyst on ovary, nodules in the throat. So, Lord, there are all these things that are going on that um, the systems of Teresa's body are breaking down. And I specifically saw her name go by, and it was ask what you will. So, Lord, we've got this list of what is this? One, two, three, four, five things. The eye disease, the neuropathy in the feet, the pain in the body that isn't specified, the cyst on the ovary and the nodules in the throat. And I ask now that you would release the power of the spirit over Teresa Wilson. And in the name of Jesus, I speak to these conditions. I command the eye disease to shrink and die and for the eyes to see normally. Do it now. And I speak to the neuropathy in the feet. I, I speak to the pain that is there, the inability to walk well. And Teresa, I, I just know from having prayed for a lot of people with neuropathy, this is not a specific word about you. It's just a generalized thing that I know is typically true. People with neuropathy in their feet many, many times, if they're not diabetic, which can create its own problems, many times they have had um, extreme distress in their uh, relationships with people. And a lot of times it's begun in their childhood in the home and possibly dad was abusive or loud or something like this. 
I, I'm just going to ask you if you can make your peace with whoever this person was, who was your oppressor, the person who came against you, spoke ill of you, possibly beat you, hit you, slapped you. Um, just make your peace with them because this will help accelerate the healing that you're feeling uh, and that you need in your feet. And then um, sometimes just systemic pain can also arise from that sort of thing. So it could it could go beyond your feet. And I saw this thing with somebody who had a problem on the ovary. And so I just speak to this cyst and these nodules and I command you rupture and all of the contents pass out of the body with the waste stream. Lord, you created our bodies to sweep away waste. The lymph system does it, and the blood system circulates and takes all of it away, whether to the bladder or to the liver, and it passes out with the waste. And I thank you that you've made our bodies to be self-cleansing systems. And so now, in the name of Jesus, just speak to this cyst, and I speak to these nodules. Break up in the, in the ovary, break up in the throat, receive the healing of the Lord, and all the neuropathy in the feet now. I speak to that and the systemic pain. Lord, we just release the those who have been uh, harmful, who have who've spoken ill, and who have been cruel. We, we release them from their need to repay. And Lord, we know that you've made a way, and there is a payment. It was already made through Jesus. But Lord, so often it's hard for us to see that on the person who's been the, our oppressor. But I ask you now, release this over Teresa, that she would walk in this freedom, the glorious freedom that you have provided for Jesus name. Amen. Uh, okay. So I got a couple of people that fit that, um, uh, other word and yeah. I'm gonna bring that up just, and in the meantime, if there's a Susan on the broadcast, I felt like I saw the name Susan and particularly the number 11 that may represent November. Um, you'll know what 11 means to you. It might be the, the day of your birth. So maybe not November, but maybe you were born on the 11th. Uh, but I got that. So if someone could comment back on that and I'll give you more. So Judy said, that's me, my grandson. Uh, about right. that, that she's been praying for David. Jessica also said, I sit in, in the back, right? And my husband's middle name is David. So that's the two I've seen so far. But um, I don't know if they've been praying for their salvation. You know, uh, I'm going to tell a short story here before we pray for these people, just for because it. this is such a teachable moment. Um, I've got a friend who's a prophet in Australia, and, and he gets a lot of super specific, accurate kind of prophetic words. And um, he was telling me a story about this time where he had a word and it he gave the word and there was someone sitting right in the front row who acknowledged it and said that's for me and meanwhile as he's finishing up giving the word and interacting with them he didn't lay hands on or anything he was just giving the word but as he's doing that he sees all these hands up in the air and you know how people will point in a room in another direction at somebody and so you kind of follow all the fingers that are pointing to whoever that person is mm -hmm. well um there was somebody directly in line from him to the first person. And then you just kept on going back from that first person. And in the very back, there was another family and all of the details exactly fit the second family couple that was there, just like the couple that was in the front row, yeah. two entirely different situations, but every, the street that they lived on, uh, you know, the names, everything exactly fit, but it was two different people and both of them came good. And so I, I, when I when I heard him tell that story, I was like, dang, Lord, I want to start giving words like that that have, you know, multiple people who respond to it because the, the details fit their unique situation. And I was in Germany late last year, just maybe in October. So, you know, COVID hadn't swept over the world yet. And um, and I gave a word and there were two people who responded. One was in one was somebody on my team and it was someone they knew in Texas back in the United States. And somebody was there from Germany and it was for somebody who was German. They both got their respective people on the phone. We give this word to them. They both break down crying. And within 48 hours, both of those words had come good. Amen. It was, come it on. was like crazy time. So I, I noticed that we had someone else say they, they had a David to the middle. Yeah. Name there's like brother. two or three. And, and I believe that actually the word you're going to give is uh, God's honoring that fleece that you threw out. I had the same thing happen to me. I prophesied and I said this, I said, there's somebody here. Your mother's name is Mary. And I gave the birthday and two people in church came forward. Both of them's mothers were named Mary and they both had that birthday. And there was a third detail. I can't remember, but all three of them, I mean the exact birthday. 
right. Mary and, right. and every detail match. And it was for both of them. And I gave them both a word that was really similar. And when I released the word, they all said, yes, that's all true for both of our mothers. Like it was identical. And the Lord knows what he's doing. He knows how to two for one with one stone, you know, two birds with one stone. Yeah, it, absolutely. It, it's and it's so it's just so darn cool when it happens. Come on. Just it's just stinking cool. I just like it. <laughs> Come so, on. All right. So all what well, you said there's three people now that have a David in the there was, world. There was two that really, really fit, one kind of third fit. Yes. So there's okay. like at least three that fit that. So as you go, if that applies to them, we'll win windle it down or uh, or it'll be for all three. All right. So uh we've got I know that we have a grandson David, and then we've got a husband David who's got a middle name of that and, and then a the nephew David, I think, was the third nephew. one. All right. That they're praying for. All right. So Father, we just come to you and we come before the throne of grace and we thank you that the word of prophecy is sure. And so we ask you now that you would open the heavens over each of these three Davids, wherever they are, and that you would let um that you would let angels ascend and descend upon them. And Lord, that this week you would do something that would provoke and stir them. And not only that, Lord, I ask in particular for this third David that you would box him into a corner. Put him where he has zero degrees of freedom. He has no choice but to surrender. And Lord, I um, when I don't sing, I sit on left. My husband's legal name is David. Four I of them. All right. So, Lord, we. I also ask you uh, for these other two Davids, the grandson and this husband, now, Lord, I, I had the sense that these, this praying has been going on for a while. And uh, and thus far, there has not been fruit in it. But, Lord, I ask that you would arrange things in such a way this week that, that conversation that has not been possible would happen and that faith would arise in the hearts of these two other Davids and that they would come to faith. Now, the third David, I, I think he's going to be, the Lord's going to put him in a, in a way where he just needs to surrender. And he will, but surrender is the word for him. These other two, I think it's more of a conversation and suddenly their mindset shifts and what they've previously not been willing to accept, they are they are now able and willing to accept. So Father, I just ask you that you would make this happen for them in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And um, I, I wanna ask the woman who has the grandson, David, can you just put in the chat box how old he is? Hallelujah. Yeah, let me know how old he is. Whoo, glory. Yeah, there's like every one of you else that, that have Davids that you're praying for. There's a lot of people here that have a David that they're praying for that believe in for salvation. Claim that word, claim that prayer. It's for you as well. Just take that. You, you don't have to, uh, it doesn't have to be an individual prayer for everyone. We just declare all the Davids, everyone you've been praying for. We just stir, stir that up. All the family members on here that have been waiting for, for salvation for their family members that are praying, Father, we're just believing for a season where you start to reveal your great love to each one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. So just Amen. receive that over yourselves in the name of Jesus. So, so I saw Nicole Potter go by and, and she, she yeah. says 18 years. I didn't think that must be that David. And I, I had the sense that he was, well, a younger man. So 18. The, there's Ju there, That was the one that was the grandson, 26. Okay. So I don't know who, I don't know who the other one is. But, all right. 26. It's still there, a younger There was two man. of them that were praying kind of for the same thing. So all right. we ended up having four or five that were kind of fitting that word, you know, that they have a David they're praying for. So this is interesting, Judy. Your name is Judy Crisscrosser. Really? Chris Crosser, Crosser, Chris Crosser. This is interesting. I, I, I think there's some kind of a, a, a word play in this that's prophetic as well. The Chris Cross, of course, they're, they're, we think of the cross as a vertical thing with a horizontal member, but the Romans used many crosses that were shaped like an X. And so the Chris Cross applies uh, in this. And uh, I, I have this sense for your David, uh, Judy, that the Lord is going to cross him up and this family name is somehow going to become a thing because he's going to scramble his brain. I, th I think this guy has had some sort of a long-term um, mental barrier, almost a, you know, it, it's become a point of resistance to the Lord because there's an offense in the mind about the ways of God. And I, I think the Lord is going to just shake all of that up and give him a completely new paradigm. And it, it's going to be a little bit, disorienting to him so I, I would encourage you if you're close to your grandson you might want to just kind of be close by be available to help him in this season because I, I think he's going to need some comfort and some explanation of things as this new paradigm is formed up and again crisscross x marks the spot I, I think there's a divine grace bomb coming to him this week 
Amen. Come on. That's good. Hallelujah. And so just claim that for the rest of you guys as well. There's a lot of Davids on here. I've only seen what's surprising is I've only seen one suit. I figured I'd have to give more details. I've only seen one Susan so far that said uh, 11 made sense. They, their birthday was November um, and their daughter is Susan. And, and, and so I believe that the Lord was highlighting Susan in there. Can you let me know? Are you praying for your daughter's salvation? Is something going on with her, the sickness in the body, something like that. I felt like the Lord had highlighted Susan to me that needed prayer. So the Susan that was 11, let me know on that. And Ken can, uh, while I wait for that, Ken can keep going with whatever he wants. Now I've got a couple of other women here that have responded. They're not, they're not Judy, but we've got a Linda McCleary who has a David who's 15 and there was yeah. another person and I got to go find it. But but she had a David, I think she was 18. Yeah, yeah teenager Linda ones. Cleary has a 15 year old. Um, these two Davids, this 15 and this 18 year old, you know, this is a time in life where peers make a lot of inroads into people's lives and you become like the company that you keep. It, it might be an awkward conversation, but I would encourage you to sit and ask questions. I wouldn't challenge so much. This is a word of wisdom I'm giving you now. I would not so much challenge your Davids, respectively, the 15-year-old and the 18-year-old. I can't find the 18-year-old, but I'm sure I saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not so much challenge them as I would ask them, what do they think about their friends and are their friends helping them in their walk with the Lord? And let them answer that question we become like the company we keep. And I believe for both of these Davids, the 15 and the 18 year old, there's something about these friends that are drawing them away. Hmm. And so somehow they need to find a new circle of friends, which of course is a hard thing to do. Nobody wants to be without friends and just walk away from the friendship circle that they have. So if I were you, I would begin praying into their friends right now uh, before you have the conversation. And I would also begin asking God to bring them new friends who can be, you know, people who help them to live an appropriate and submitted life to the things of God. Come on. Amen. Amen. My Susan hasn't responded, so keep going with wherever you want to go. All right. The other thing that I uh, wanted to pray about is um, I had a word for somebody who had a problem here. Now, this is the, on oh, your body, it, it would be the back left part of the neck. Keep going. Keep, I'll, I'll finish when you're done. And I want to pray for that. I want to pray for that neck condition. Um, and there's when I was talking about diabetes, I had the sense that the Lord wants to touch some people with their diabetes. Now I don't know. I don't know how far this is going to go, and I don't even know what this means. But I, I think the Lord is going to rebalance blood sugars tonight. Um, and it's easy to tell. You take your blood test, and you'll know right away. Um, so I think the Lord's going to rebalance blood sugar. And then there's people here who suffer from adrenal fatigue and God wants to touch your adrenal glands. Come on. Hallelujah. We'll, we'll take them in that order. So whoever you are with the neck, uh, just put your hand back here on your neck because I can't. And we're going to pray. And now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this neck right up here, high in the neck, just below the skull, I guess, we, what would we call this? This would be cervical two or three right in that area, maybe as low as cervical four. But um, in the name of Jesus, I just speak to this, and I command healing to come down, and I hmm. command the body to relax and receive what the Lord is providing. Receive the healing of God, become yes. normal according to the command of Jesus. Do it now. Do it now in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. And one of you, it's not a long-term problem. I think there's four people that have particularly gone for this. One of you, you slept on it funny last night, and this is nothing more than a crick in your neck. And so just, you know, don't be all caught up with worry about it. Just know that it's a one-night deal and it's going to be gone. And the other, I believe the Lord is straightening and aligning your neck. Um, and then I... Keep going. Oh, look at this. Pastor Wren, I responded, my daughter Susan has serious issues and my birthday is in November. Yeah, I'm letting you finish with that. Okay, then I'll let hand the ball over to you. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then um, I want to pray for uh, oh the the blood sugar and the, the the diabetic and hypoglycemic conditions. So if if you have that now, your pancreas is really what moderates all of that, and the pancreas is I'll stand up so you can see it. Your pancreas is just about here, uh, about where your solar plexus is, maybe just below that. So put your hands there on your pancreas, whoever you are who have this. And I know this is particularly a problem as people age. 
But, you know, God actually made us so that we would be able to live healthy until the end of our days. Oftentimes we don't, but but it is actually the will of God that we live healthy. Come on. So, Lord, now we just, as I told the story of all these people being healed of diabetes and hypoglycemia, I just want to call to remembrance that story. And I want to ask in the name of Jesus that a similar grace would be launched out over this webcast and that across the globe, wherever people are who are struggling with this, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch their uh, pancreases and that they would begin to function and produce insulin in the right quantities. And so, Lord, for those who have low blood sugar, that you would um, moderate the amounts of insulin. And for those who have high blood sugar, you would make the, the pancreas come to life and produce as it is meant to produce. And so we speak life to the dead. We speak life to the dead. We speak to the dead cells of the pancreas. And we say, come to life and receive in the name of Jesus. Yes. Come to life and receive in the name of Jesus. Yeshua. Heal their and body right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I also want to pray now for, um, I can't even remember what the third word was. What was that? I was lost in Susan. So, Oh, oh, the adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue, I yes. pray for the adrenal glands. Yes. And so if you can, if your arms are flexible enough, you know, put your hands back around to the sides and just let your fingers rest on your adrenal gland. Thank you, if you can't, I guess put your hands in front and kind of pray through the, the whole thickness of your body. But to the extent you're able, put your hands to the back or get someone near you if you're in a home and you're watching us with a, with a family member or a friend. But now, Lord, we just speak to the adrenal glands and we just say of adrenal fatigue, no more. Adrenal fatigue, no more. We command the adrenal system to awaken, yes, Lord. And to produce all that is necessary so that the body can function and all of this tiredness and all of this ongoing fatigue and, and even nausea, I speak to that in Jesus' name. Break up and pass out of the body. Be gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. All right. right turn yeah, right, right now. There, hey, there's going to be fire that come on some of you with that adrenal fatigue. You're going to feel something burning on your sides. When you start to feel something happen in your body, make sure to post it here so that we can glorify God with you. But you're just going to receive a healing. I, I just I feel like something's stirring. Like I feel like... um. Uh, sometimes you have a flash, but then other times you just have this wave that's cr uh, crawling in and the water's just rising. And I feel like it's rising right now. So, uh, yeah, he, you don't want to go anywhere. This is good. This is, I mean, the power of God is just rising in the room. So we got, uh, I called out Susan and 11 and, and you said your daughter's name is Susan and November is your birthday. And I asked you if she's having some serious problems, something that I need to pray about. I felt particularly drawn to her. Uh, you can let me know. I, I don't know if there's some health issues. I think there's actually some health issues, but I think that there, I think what I'm seeing is if there's health issues, the root of it is actually some trauma that she's gone through. Some things have happened to her that there was some trauma in her life. I'm not going to get into the trauma details. I don't, I don't, I don't want to embarrass anybody and release their secrets, you know, all over uh, live streams, but, but <laughs> you can just confirm yes, trauma. You don't have to tell me any hardcore details, but I believe she went through trauma and that has led to some problems all her life and has actually created some some health situations that she's dealt with as well. And I just believe that the Lord is like lovingly his eye is on her and his heart is to heal her and touch her. And so I want you to share this word with her, but I want her to see that the, that God has highlighted her. And I almost feel like even in her early years, there's some trauma even in her young days, like maybe even just before she turned into a teenager, that 10 to 12-ish kind of range in there. I felt like um, that, okay, so absolutely hit and run at 16 years old and she's now 51. So she's still dealing with that trauma. But I feel like there's even some emotional stuff between 10 and 12 that may have happened as well. Then that happened. So I'm... Um, I feel like the Lord just wants to highlight her and he wants to highlight you, Linda, as well. I know you've been praying for her. I know your heart is for your daughter and, and I, you, you've been praying for her for a very long time. And the Lord is showing you that he's always been there. He still heals. He still hears, okay, and loves you. So I'm just going to pray for your daughter. I'm going to pray for you. But I actually have an assignment for you as well. I believe the Lord wants to send you on assignment. I actually think you've been asking the Lord what's the next assignment. Um, and the Lord is saying that he has an assignment for you. All right. And so I think you've been asking into that if he has anything for you to do. And its answer is yes, there's a new assignment coming. I think you've known there's a new assignment coming. Um, but, but I feel like you're, you're like, it's, it's coming. 
it's starting to land now. Now is the landing season. So uh, let me just speak this over Susan. In the na mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just declare that right now any injury she has, any trauma that's been built up in her body all these years from what happened when she was younger, Lord, I just decree and release the full healing weight of God over Susan in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just speak right now into her body and declare that it must line up with heaven, that the healing fire of God come on her even now where she's at. And we just see a complete and total radical turnaround that she sees that God has highlighted her for such a time as this. And that that testimony, that season of suffering and going through what she has will be marked by a great outpouring of blessing on her life, that the favor of God is gonna have a suddenly turnaround over her. And she's actually gonna see her finances blessed She's going to see other areas. I believe that there's some family struggles on her family that have resulted in some stress there. And I believe that God is about to just wash through that family. I see his water just washing through and cleansing the family. There's going to be a healing that happens and it just floods through the family because of the power of God hitting one. It pyramids down into the rest of it. And so I just believe that, that God is touching and highlighting you and touching your daughter in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. That's that's amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I want to pray for it. Now, I, I was just looking through the chat stream, and I don't see a single person here with the name Elizabeth. Not a one. I haven't seen one. I was going to say, maybe I missed it, but I, I, haven't I, seen I one have yet. a really clear sense that there is somebody named Elizabeth who needs a job. And the Lord is going to give her this job. But if there's no Elizabeth on the chat stream, maybe she's watching it on YouTube live and isn't responding. Well, or all the, all the chat streams, are, they, they come in here to our chat stream, unless you're watching it on Facebook. Uh, I see all the chat streams, but uh, we'll see if there's Elizabeth. It, we got 250 people on here, so uh, not everyone comments. A lot of people just watch. Yeah. So far, right, there, there we go. The possibility is someone's going to watch it Me? later. There, there's a Liz right here. And I was going to say Liz. That, that's oh. actually what I wanted to say. Liz. There's Is a Liz. Is your full on name here. Elizabeth? So uh, are you looking for a job too? Let, let us know. Say yes, Elizabeth looking for a job. Yeah, she said I'm Elizabeth. Let us know you're looking for a job too. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory. Shoo. I see the I'm Elizabeth. Praise the Lord. I got that part right. <laughs> You know, Ren, I told you the story about how I, I looked at your there's name two. the last time we broadcast. And I said, there's somebody on the broadcast with the name Ren. And people were calling out. There was somebody who actually watched it after the fact and who grabbed a hold of that word that I gave because her nickname, the one, the name that everyone calls her. Oh, she just got a job. She just got one. So she was needing a job, just got one. Oh, well, that's interesting. Did you get it today? Or just like the, within the week? I, I feel like like very, very close. Yeah, either today or within the maybe week. I'm, maybe I'm a day late and a word of knowledge short. No, no, that's a, that's exceptional. <laughs> that means that the Lord wants to highlight her and has something else for her. Yeah, well, let's pray for that job to be blessed. Yeah. All right, so Liz Bergeron, Bergeron, uh, also known as Elizabeth Bergeron. Uh, the Lord calls you by name and he's given you a job. I think he's given you a job that's more than just employment. He's given you a job to do. You're on assignment in that job. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bless Elizabeth, that she would find favor with the management and favor with her colleagues. And I pray that you would open doors for her to be able to share truth in all of its forms. This could be everything from how to live a, a better life to getting saved and everything in between. But, Lord, I, I just ask now for this, for this Elizabeth, that you've positioned her there and you put her on assignment. I ask that the assignment would be um, compelling and rich. And that she would have many good conversations. I, I, this is a funny thing to say. It may almost seem obvious, but Liz, I, I have the sense that you should not hesitate to invite people that you meet there to go to church with you. Some of these people may be backslidden and very open to it. Some of them may have never been to church, but they're, Think they're curious, uh, but I think you'll find favor in doing that. That's not the same as leading them to Christ. Oh, look at this husband just passed away three yeah, weeks ago. That's why I said I think the Lord gave you that word to pinpoint her. Yeah. Because she needed something else. I felt like that you, yeah, you weren't off on your word of knowledge that you were just close enough to get her pinpointed. Yeah. So she'd answer. Yeah. Wow. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I could sense very much that there's something else that was troubling her. I didn't nail that, but uh, and we're very sorry for your loss, obviously, obviously. Yeah. But but the Lord is highlighting you, so take some comfort in that. And I take it this this profile photo that you've got would have been him. So he looks like a younger man. Yeah. Wow. All right. So Lord, I pray for this, Liz. I just ask you to touch her heart. I'm glad that you're providing for her. You love widows and orphans, and you provide for widows and orphans, of which we now have one here. But Lord, three weeks is not enough time to process all the grief and the emotions and the loss and the sorrow and the loneliness and, and just all of it. So Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would just put your spirit on Liz and that you would be the spirit of comfort to her. And even as she goes into this new environment of work, I, I just ask that you would um, heal her heart in the midst of the work she does and bless the work of her hands. Lord, let her find a confidence that she is going to need as she faces life on her own now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, our condolences to you, Liz. I know that that is difficult, and there's, you know, you're going to have a grieving period, and and that's okay. It's it's absolutely okay to grieve, um, but just know that the Lord highlighted you tonight so that He can let you know that He weeps with you, He grieves with you over your loss. I feel very confident and secure. Like I, I just have the sense that everything's okay on the other side of that. Uh, uh, not that grief, not that you are not allowed to grieve because it's okay. Absolutely. Uh, I just want you to know that to rest in your heart that the Lord sees you. He's lifting you up. He's providing for you. He's taking care of you right now in this season. I feel it very strongly that his loving arms and, and his embrace is on you and his favor is on you to get you through this season uh, that you shall live and not die. He will make it through that. Your heart will be whole. And I feel, I feel like uh, the situation around it was very sudden, um, you know, and, it feels very sudden to me. Um, so we just bless you in that. And I'm so glad that the Lord highlight, you know, that's the one thing that about this broadcast. And one thing that I pray all the time um, is that Lord, the words that come aren't just impressive, that they hit to the heart of what you're dealing with, that they yeah. go after the big things, you know, that you're dealing with that you need in order to shift into your identity. Something like this can rob you of your identity. I'm just declaring this right now that you will have a blessed future, no matter how empty it feels at the moment, the Lord is saying that you will have a blessed future. And I just speak that loving embrace of God all over you. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, yeah. Lord. It, it was some kind of accident or I can't, t I, I couldn't pinpoint on it, whether it was an illness or an accident, but it felt sudden. It didn't feel like a, like an illness that happened that was drawn out or something like I, I, I you can let me know if, if I'm right at all, but it almost so felt like there was a car accident chat, or something. Chat box here, very sudden. Yeah. She said right very sudden. Box. Yeah. I have very sudden up right now, Yeah, but, but it felt like may, maybe a car accident or something like that, but it felt like it was just sudden it could have been an illness but whatever it was, it was sudden it wasn't like we knew it was coming uh so uh i understand that that's tragic but the lord sees what happened and he's got him in his hand i feel very confident of that yeah Oof. lord thank you for just getting to the heart of people wow yeah amazing night wow praise wow. the lord praise the lord um you know the first woman i prayed for that kind of was given this open ticket um she had uh neuralgia in her foot but yes the other thing that i had early on before we really got into all this was i felt that there were people here who were having problems with their feet and in particular um some of them are having issues on the top of their foot such that when they walk they feel pain on the top of their foot if, if this if my hand were a foot which of course it's not but it'd be this area up here and there are other people who are having problems on the outer part of the foot, not the instep or the arch uh, on the inner foot, but the outer part along the outside. When people uh, walk, they're having problems with that. And then there's, I think, three people who have plantar, what do they call it, plantar fasciitis. Amen. Wilson, have been able to stop crying and praising God. I, yeah, I just amen. love it when the anointing is so thick in the room that it just touches yeah. people through an internet connection. Yeah, praise the Lord. Um, so, so we've got these foot conditions. We got on the top. We got the outer foot. Here we go. Chastity Park says that's me. Um, and and I, you know, it's a funny thing. I, I remember as a kid, a couple of my aunts and uncles had uh, 
bunions, corns and bunions is what they call them. I, I haven't heard anyone even use the word bunion in years, but the bunion, this is an inflammation that is in the, usually the ball of the foot. Is that you, Andrea Price? And then left heel pain. Okay. Well, we've no, seen Linda already. Them. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of them are showing up. Okay. So these are, these people are coming through the prayer line again, second time. So I just want to pray for all the feet and I want you to put your hands now, wherever you are, bend down, put your hand on, uh, on your foot, wherever it hurts. And Lord, your word says that, um, those who wait on the Lord will run and not be weary and they will also not be in pain and they will walk and not faint. And so, Lord, I ask for running and walking to return to all of these areas of the feet. The, the top part of the, of the foot, what they call the, I um, can't even think of what that's called now, instep. Uh, Lord, the outer part of the foot around the outside from the pinky toe all the way down to the heel. Lord, there was this one sister who had the, the problem in the heel. And, and I think you have some sort of spurs in your heel. And, I, and it looks to me like there's some sort of chipping or almost a, a cleaving or something that's cutting in the in the heel joint uh, at the back of the foot. And so, Lord, I just command these things to knit right and now. to receive the healing of the Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I All know. pain go. Come on. All pain go right now. Whew. That's right. And, Lord, for those who have this condition called bunions and even people who have um, gout, I just speak to these conditions and I command you clear up and be healed now. In the name of Jesus, receive the power of the Lord into the feet. And if you if you have the ability to do it, stand up and, you know, flex your foot or try walking or doing something you couldn't do, you know, bend back and forth. You know what hurts. You know what isn't right. Try testing it right now. Here, Linda, Lin, Lydia Miller says she has bunions on both feet. Yeah. So we yeah. command the bunions to shrink. We command the deformation in the bone come into alignment and become natural according to the Lord's word. And we command all the pain to drain in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, guys, you know, I know that there's a lot of people that you love and you have family members that you want us to pray for. Do me a favor. When you know we're praying for people every night, if they have an issue, invite them onto the broadcast to get prayed for. Don't just stand in the gap. Invite them. There's no reason you can't send them a quick message and say, hey, you need to jump on this broadcast. They're praying for your condition. You know, be ready when we call out a condition like that to invite people to it. But I just believe healing's happening right now. Somebody, if your pain has gone from like a 10 to a 7, it doesn't have to go to a 0. If you feel like the pain is diminishing, comment and, and let us know that, hey, it, it feels less. It it feels like it's gone to a 6. Like, let us, let us know because that means the Lord is beginning to work healing you and we need to pray again. We need to lean into that. So don't don't be afraid to just let us know if there's been any shift at all. I feel heat in my foot right there in the name of Jesus. There's, there's healing happening here. There's glory on this broadcast. And I believe you're receiving the glory of God right now. Uh, and it's happening right now in the name of Jesus. You're receiving healing. Uh, oh, look at this right here. See, that's what I'm talking about. Right there. Wow, my right toe has God, not been 20 man. years. I'm bending it now. 20 years. Right now, decade-old injuries are being healed. Finished work in the mighty name of Jesus. Whew. Ooh, I just felt the Holy Spirit right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's being healed right now. You're not just going to bend it. It's going to be fully restored right now. Full flexibility, full. It, you're not going to work it out over a few days. It's going gonna, it's gonna to unlock right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shelby said, my hands and my feet are hot. I didn't realize I told that testimony about Shelby's brother contacting her. You yeah. know, Shelby, uh, you know, Shelby and Colin, they were the ones in the very back of OSI that just kept getting rocked over and over again. The ones with all the kids. Do you remember them? They, they were the yes, ones that like God guys. kept yes. highlighting, you know, them from the deliverance. Trust yes. me. Yes. Yes. That's Shelby and Colin. I oh, went to, let, let me hi, tell guys. you <laughs> let me tell you their transformation. They can tell their own story, but let me tell you the, it, Colin's transformation. All I right. went to lunch with them on Sunday. They came just to say thank you for the OSI conference and how it's radically changed their life. They've been going live preaching the gospel on the internet every day since then. I went to lunch with him and he begins to witness to the waitress. And within one minute, I mean, literally a minute, he has that waitress praying and receiving Christ. Okay. Great right Lord. there. I hop while, you, while we're sitting there. More of that. And just radically, he can't talk about Jesus without crying, like radically life shifted. And part of that was from the, you know, he, I mean, he obviously got highlighted over and over again, but what an amazing deliverance time he had with you. And it was just amazing. So I, yeah, I wanted to point that out that you knew them so you could celebrate with that. What you, you've Praise met the them. Lord. So you, you know, now celebrate. that I'm looking at the photo, 
now you remember. I recognize them, but I, I, without you pointing it out, I wouldn't have instantly connected the dots. No, that's just a fantastic thing. Unreal how the transformation has happened. Ah, uh, bless the Lord. That's so good. I love it. Oh yeah, there you go. Now you can remember the wife. He said, "Boo to me." <laughs> Wait, <laughs> 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 boo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I so I believe there's joining when that happened. Is the name? Yes. Uh, so uh, I believe there's healing happening right now. Come on, if anybody else is feeling any fire right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Okay, so Dallas says less. Whoo, come on. All right, this come is on. good. Let's see the full healing. Full healing in Dallas's foot right now, in the name of Jesus. This Dallas, she has got to be a Cajun. Look at that name. It was Dallas Amor to something or other, something or other. <laughs> Only Cajuns name people with names. Only like Cajuns. That. Only Cajuns. Or people that just want to put up weird names on the internet. Well, a uh, lot of that was all French, though. Did, did, you know, Amor there, that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, she can answer that. I gave her a powerful word yesterday. Um, so pain <laughs> is going down in the name of Jesus. Come on, people are getting healed tonight. I that's love it. it. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for what you're doing in all these feet. Toes that are loosening up, pain that's leaving, flexibility returning. We thank you for that. We give you credit. Obviously, we don't get any. We're not even there. But, um, but Lord, you hear our prayers, and you are touching your people, and you are saying that you really care about something as basic and, and elementary as being able to walk. And so, Lord, we just ask in Jesus' name for complete and total healing in all these areas of the bone. Again, in the, the archway back on the heel, the outer part of the foot, the up on the top and the instep and in the bunions. We just speak to these things in Jesus' name. Lydia Miller said, my feet had heat. Come on, right heat, now. Heat, healing. feet. Got Hot heat on the feet, feet that are in the street. <laughs> Andy raps. Okay. That's it. He's got it all. That's He's a it. Quadruple threat right there. <laughs> <laughs> Prophecy, healing, teaching, all of it. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Keep healing okay, in I the name pray of Jesus. Giovanna Ka Ka Kanoyan. Ka 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 Noyan. Yeah. Um, please pray for me and my daughter, Tania. We have uh, COVID 19 and feeling down. So we're going to pray for that right now because we, we've actually seen quite a bit of COVID healed over, over the Internet. So, okay. Lord, we specifically lift up Giovanna, and we ask now in the name of Jesus for your spirit to come on her and on her daughter. And, Lord, in your word, you talk about this spirit called Keteb that brings pestilence and plague on people. And it's that very spirit that you tell us we are not to fear. And so, Lord, we take authority over Keteb in Giovanna and her daughter's life. And we command now to tab to release what you have been holding. And we command you to turn yes, loose of her. Take your fever. Take your breathing difficulties. Take all of the organic problems. Take the diarrhea and hit the road. Get out of here in Jesus' name. Come you have on. no right to be here. This is God's territory. You're trespassing and you're a troublemaker. So we just say hit the road. Go now in Jesus' name. <sighs> Look at this. Angela Gavello and to something. Her feet were sweating. And yeah. Amelia roll. Oh, I know Amelia rolled on. Hi, Amelia. Look at that. Good Her foot you. is healed. Praise God. Great for you. That's awesome. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she's she's checking in from Central America. Come, oh, amen. Amen. Glad to have you. <laughs> yeah, she's a I friend don't think of mine. We, Praise God. I don't think we've had Central America on here, so that's exciting. Heat in my head and inside my arches and my feet. Come on, people Praise are starting to get healed. Claim some of this for you guys. Even though he hasn't prayed for any of your conditions yet, just start claiming, Lord, for me too. Not just feet, backs, ankles, knees, everything. Come on, just claim it for you. We'll, we'll just throw out a, a generalized prayer and we'll see a bunch of people get healed right now. You know, he wanted to focus on a few, but come on. Uh, right now in the name of Jesus, just wherever, just, just receive healing in your body. Right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I just declare all pain go. If you're in pain in any way, shape, or form, it must leave in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not kingdom. It is not heaven's kingdom for pain to be in there. Hallelujah right now. Because the kingdom of heaven, there is no more sorrows, there is no more tears, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So right now we call down the kingdom, and all pain has to leave and flee at the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to see people's pain just go. Whatever it is you're, you need receiving of healing for right now, in the name of Jesus, just receive that. Mm. And, and if you're healed, just let me know. Or if you're feeling like something's happening in your body, let us know. We want to celebrate with you. Uh, hallelujah. It is an open bar. Yes, that's right, Barbara. <laughs> it is an open bar, whatever you need. In Jesus' name, receive it. And Jesus is buying the drinks tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And it turns out he serves wine. So, I mean, I, you know. hear, I hear that. I hear he's a pretty good winemaker. Yeah. Yes, it turns out the wine's pretty good. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo. Glory. 
Thank you, Father, that you're touching lives right now in the name of Jesus. So yeah. guys, right now, just keep, you know, keep messaging. If you're feeling some healing happen in your body, I want to take one more thing before uh, I want to respect Ken's time. I know we're, we've gone really long tonight, uh, much longer than normal, but uh, I want to respect Ken's time tonight. So, uh, you know, if he feels like he wants to pray for some people just here in a second, that's fine too, but I want to respect his time. Um, and I just want to say this real quickly. I've changed up the model of which I do the live broadcast and stuff. I'm not going to sit here and beg you guys to give. Uh, I don't do that. I'm not going to give you a big speech on how you should. And what, although we are trying to go to the Middle East, we're, we're, we're doing huge crusades in Pakistan right now. And there's all kinds of needs in the ministry. I want you to check out Ken's ministry and be a part of that. I've linked his ministries on there so that you can go be a part of that. He has training and equipping and all kinds of schools of ministry that you can be a part of and just get really, at, if, if you thought tonight was really good in what he taught you, imagine going through the, not the impromptu live, Live, but his actual articulated, put together, lined out uh, education series that he has with Orbis. So go check out those links and be a part of his ministry and at least follow him on Facebook, guys. Uh, but if you're planning on giving tonight to the broadcast, if you're planning on giving, let me just throw that up real quick. I don't want you to jump off and give right now. And I'm not asking you uh, to jump off and give right now. All I want to say, if you're planning on giving at the end of the broadcast, I'll throw up a slide at the very, very end so you can give. But I've changed up my model. The Lord kind of corrected me and said this. You, you keep just, you, you've asked people to give testimonies that they've given into the ministry and how it's blessed them, but you don't actually pray for them. You just ask them to give and then say thanks and get off because you don't like asking for that. And he says, I need you to pray for those people. I need you to bless those people and speak a blessing over those that give. So from now on, anybody that's giving, I want to just say a quick blessing over and just bless your life for giving because we are sowing into each other. Um, and that's the idea, sowing in the ministry. So if you're planning on giving tonight, I don't care if it's a dollar by cash app, a dollar by PayPal. I don't care what you're giving. It can just be a simple uh, one-time small gift of a million dollars. That's fine. It's no big deal. Uh, everyone's getting tired of that. I've been saying that every night. So uh, wh uh, whatever you're giving, I just want to pray and bless and ask the Lord to bless you and bless your family for it. So if you could just comment giving real quick. And I just want to highlight those people that are going to give something tonight. If you've already given by the Facebook super sticker, I mean, excuse me, uh, YouTube super stickers or Facebook stars or whatever. That's awesome. I love you and appreciate you. But if you're just going to give tonight and you're planning on sewing in and, and helping us to continue doing what we're doing, just say giving. Just if you already give and you're already a partner, I'm going to pray for all the partners and those that gave already. So you don't need to tell me again. But if you gave tonight or are giving tonight, um, I just want to pray over you real quick as well as everyone else. Amen. Thank you, Andrea. I'm going to pray for you, Shelby. I'm going to pray for you guys. Dallas, I'm going to pray for you right now. You, uh, just anybody else that's giving, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to speak a blessing. I'm just going to ask that the Lord just continue to increase you giving. Amen. Thank you guys. A and then we'll, we'll release like a general prayer over you guys. Make sure that all the healing happens. So don't go anywhere. I'm not just cutting off the broadcast. I want to pray for you one more time, but I just wanted to do this real quick before we got to the end. And then that way I could respect Ken's time at the end here. Uh, giving. Thank you, Teresa. I'm going to pray for you right now. And so each one of these people, I'm just going to ask for the favor of God. And what's crazy is, is since I've changed this, every single day, somebody has sent me a testimony of how God has restored anything they gave and has blessed them. We don't give to get. We don't have the theology of give to get. But if I'm praying for you, I'm believing that God is going to answer those prayers. And so I've shifted up and making sure that you guys are keeping this ministry going. I need to pray for you. That, that bottom line was the correction wasn't to you guys. Of You need to give more. The correction was me. I need to pray for those giving. And that needed to happen. So I took my correction. So I'm praying for each one of you that are giving. So if you're giving, just go ahead and, and, and hit giving. And I'm going to pray for you right now. And you can jump in on that just by posting giving. Uh, and then give at the end after the broadcast. I'll leave the, the link up for a second so you guys can grab however you want to give. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just declare this right now. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is giving tonight and sowing into the ministry, whether it's to me or to Ken. Father, Lord, I just thank you that you're going to pour in and pour out, Father, abundance from heaven, that it is an open heaven. It is an open bar. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I just declare that everyone giving their seed of faith, Father, multiply and grow into fruit, Lord. Right now, you are looking for people that you can pour into that are good soil for your resources. And Lord, I know your eyes are on those people that are 
kingdom minded, that will take the resources they're giving and pour them into the kingdom. And so right now, Lord, I'm asking for you to take these people who have given, who are saying they're giving, Lord, as good soil and that you would plant things in them, that you would give them more, that you would increase in them right now in the mighty name of Jesus so that they have the opportunity to continue to be even more kingdom minded. And so right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that there is nothing that is impossible for them, that you take care of every situation. I pray for family dynamics. I pray for jobs and increase, Lord. I pray for peace in their marriages right now over those that are giving, peace in their families right now over those that are giving. Lord, I just ask that the abundance of heaven be with them. And so I bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Amen. If, you have a, if you have a healing testimony tonight, if you have a giving testimony that happens, please send those to me. Private message me those testimonies. If you start with the word testimony, I promise you I will read it. If you just, it, I get a lot of messages, but if I see testimony as the first word, I stop, I read it, I respond every time. Okay, until I can't, I will. Uh, thank you guys for giving. So all those blessings I'm praying over each one of you every one of you that were highlighted tonight. So Ken, maybe just a general prayer or yep. whatever you feel like closing it out with. Like, Yep. Father, I thank you that we live in momentous times. I thank you that although uh, everything's in upheaval and the world is frightened at the tossing and turning of the waves of the sea, you tell us that we should not be shaken. And you yes. tell us that we should look up and lift up because our redemption is drawing near. We're going to go home soon. I don't know if that's 20 years. I don't know if it's 25. I don't know if it's two, but whatever it is, you're coming and you're coming a lot faster than most people even dare to believe. And so, Father, I thank you that, 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 that when Jesus comes, everybody will know there won't be any need to, to be talking about what might, could, should, could, would be happening because it's going to be like lightning flashing from the east to the west. And I thank you that uh, you say in the word and you cause Jesus to prophesy that the gospel of the kingdom would be proclaimed throughout all the nations and then the end would come. Lord, this gospel of healing and deliverance, this gospel of prophetic, or this gospel of uh, the mentally ill and the physically ill, this gospel of setting people free, of bringing abundance and prosperity in the midst of difficulty and famine and hardship. This gospel is the one that will be proclaimed and is being proclaimed throughout all the world. Thank you for that. And I ask you now, that you would just put a special boldness upon every person who listens yes, to this Lord. broadcast. And as you've promised that you would give us words to speak and in the hour when we need those words, even if we've never really had any formal training as an evangelist, that we would just find ourselves speaking beyond ourselves. But Lord, I ask that the harvest would begin and it would let it begin with us. The harvest is plentiful. The labors are few. Raise up more laborers and let them be those who are with us tonight on this podcast in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Uh, Ken, I want to thank you for being on the broadcast tonight. What a powerful night we had. Your teaching was just absolutely phenomenal. The prayer time. Uh, guys, we do this every night from Monday to Friday, uh, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, this is not Ken's first time. It won't be his last. I, I, I love bringing him on here. What, what's, is there anything that they, that's coming up for you that they can be a part of other than just following you on Facebook and the, the ministry pages? I'm actually doing an event that's virtual um, in New York City this weekend. I, I don't know if it's sold out or not. I literally don't know. But it, but if there are slots left, people could sign up for that and attend. And they would go to ChristianUnion.org. It's not my website. It's the sponsor's website. One word, ChristianUnion.org. And they can uh, see about signing up. Again, it may be full. I don't know. But if it's not full, then that's their next first opportunity to participate in something. And then um, I have other events coming up. Over the next few weeks, they're all posted at my website, which is orbisministries.org. Yeah, so go to his website. You can follow him. What's happening when he's coming near you? Request for him to come near and follow him on, on there and check out his school. It's, I mean, you, you heard tonight, and that was just like off the cuff type stuff out of his head. I'm telling you, just go check it out. You're going to be blessed by it. Uh, we appreciate you guys being on here. And as always, uh, we love you guys. We appreciate what you do for the ministry. We appreciate that you, you know, I appreciate that you let me, that you guys come on here and let me prophesy and pray over you and let me bring on these guests to prophesy and pray over you. We're in a different world and a different season where God is not restricted by time or space. And what a time for COVID to hit. If COVID had hit any other time, so many people would be depressed. And instead they're being raised up all over the internet. The word's going out faster than ever before. The God of the airs has been defeated. And so this is a, what is happening here is a God uh, a, a realignment of the church 
and, and how God can get across to people. So it's amazing. So be here, share it out, be available for it. And remember guys, I'll, I'll put up the giving in just a second, but before I go, I just want you to know one thing and, and hang out here with me for just a second, Ken. Um, and, and let me let you know one thing, guys. I love you. God loves you. Shalom. Shalom.